person for the job of President of the United States. My unique talents give me the ability to be assertive and diplomatic at the same time. I'm a person who will spike the conversation, who will get politics rolling and stimulate new questions and new answers to our current political dilemma facing our nation. I believe I have a keen understanding of the economy and how to improve where we're at relative to other nations around the world. I believe that our goal at America's Third Party was to create a very strong platform in which would propel the American people forward with new opportunities and a new possibility of creating a better nation, a cleaner environment, and less war. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to America's Third Party. I'm David Sponheim, and today is Technology Thursday. We are dealing with a very strange time we're living in, and it is definitely getting weird, especially considering they're releasing all the rioters from the jails in Washington, D.C. and in St. Louis. Now, you'd think Donald Trump would, would want to keep the rioters in the jails so they don't come out and riot again, right? No, quite the opposite. Donald Trump wants riots to continue. This is a, a veritable takedown of our freedoms, and they want to create such civil unrest that they would declare martial law. Such civil unrest that would necessitate violating posse comitatus rules, which frankly are not in force. So now we've got rioters going back on the street, and let's not forget that Trump provided no leadership to the governors involving releasing prisoners and did not say to the governors, don't release the prisoners. And 67,000 prisoners are out from jails because of COVID-19 overreactions by the Trump administration. So it goes on and on. They want the rioting to continue. And now the brick message still has not reached the mainstream media. Countless bricks out there. We've seen m many bricks across the country uh, profiled on the uh, Bricks for rioters, hashtag. We saw a bunch of that recently. Here's a picture from St. Louis of a terrible riot that went on a couple days ago. And every single person has been released back into the general population. And look at the rioting that went on in St. Louis a couple days ago. See, the directive is not to get less rioting. The directive that Donald Trump has from his, his overseers 
is to keep it going and make it worse. So Donald Trump is the, is the crazy maker. He's the one who's trying to initiate all this by threatening people. You loot, we shoot, that kind of thing. General Mattis has come out publicly against him. And now uh, a top Republican is beginning to drift from the Republican Party, Senate Republican Murkowski. Yeah, she's starting to struggle with whether to back Trump. Many Republicans are beginning to think that his behavior, trying to invoke the Insurrection Act illegally, violating even the best judgment of his top military advisors, is indicative of incompetence. And Trump uh, is definitely not uh, good friends with General Mattis that he fired. S send us a link, please. Okay. Yeah, this is the thing. There's a lot of... Uh, a a lot of talk now about Republicans leaving the Republican Party. So welcome to America's third party. We stand up for your rights, all of our rights. The thing is that Republicans uh, are not aware that the technology of 5G is being deployed, which will nullify your Second Amendment right. Don't forget that. Trump is really pro 5G. I am very concerned about 5G safety. Big difference. And remember, too, that Trump refuses to say no forced vaccinations. I'm the only person who says no forced vaccinations. Biden won't say that either. My name isn't on the ballot because people aren't able to get me on the ballot, Riverman. It's too difficult for people to concentrate long enough to get me on the ballot. So I'm asking people to write my name in, David Sponheim. I'm fast used to give it that one, put it. I'm not sure what that is. It's from a movie? Yeah, I can't play that right now. Take a knee before no man. Yeah, I don't bend the knee at all. I won't bend the knee for some new world order takeover. We found recently that Minneapolis is building up their own uh, police force. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that crazy. Got to, yeah, it's weird. We, we, we're just shocked. Minneapolis is slated to have their own police force. It's, it's going to be different. It's going to be like a new world order police force, completely revised. A lot of people are concerned that Black Lives Matter is being run by white people, and they're right. This black woman made a very strong appeal, claiming that Black Lives Matter is a joke. It doesn't represent blacks, and that blacks don't need to be turn this into a racial issue. The real issue is brutality not racial divide. The Democrats and the, and the liberal media keeps wafting the flame of racial divide like they want it to happen. Black Lives Matter is a joke. Yep. You are the racist. Right. The racist is you. Yep. It's because yep. that white guy yep. killed that. You yep. think they're racist. The racist is the Black Lives Matter. Yep. Go to Chicago. Yep. They don't have schools. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go to Chicago. They don't have food. She made a good point. I mean, Black Lives Matter never ever gathers in Chicago where blacks are killing blacks. You'd think that that would be a big part of their, their campaign, you know? She made a good point. And they die every day. They don't matter. Because you can't get attention from that. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So these two are out there speaking uh, the truth and they're black and they're, they're saying, hey, Black Lives Matter doesn't represent us and we don't even need a people like Black Lives Matter because there's no problem. So why is this big problem getting worse and worse? Well, look at Black Lives Matter. Only trends in the summer before elections and then nobody talks about it. Weird. This is a tracking of the social media messaging on Black Lives Matter. It only happens the summer before a major election. Go figure. Okay, they did bury a George Floyd today. I didn't see an open casket. I would think he looked pretty good. He, he only died from asphyxiation. They could have easily opened the casket to prove he was dead, right? They didn't bother to do an open casket. It's weird. Truth. Okay, the worst the Illinois brewing community has to offer, truth. Everyone bought in on it because they listened to the damn media. George Floyd isn't dead. He's a porn star, actor who knows the officer who isn't even a real officer. It was paid ploy to start a race war. Wake the F up. I'm waiting for the day the media tells you to walk off a cliff. Don't forget your mask. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, you know, we didn't see George Floyd die on the street and we saw like three camera angles and they're all different. It's like they set this thing up for a couple of different photo shoots. And boy, there are camera angles. There's a whole video done all about it. Like it's, we're, we're sure this happened this way. There's a, a couple of odd things that happened during that event. George Floyd was hauled out, uh, out of the police car. He was already in the police car. He was hauled out of the police car and laid down again. And they put his their foot or his knee back on his neck. He was in the police car and they pulled him out again. Well, why would they do that? And how do we know they didn't inject him with a sedative so he looked like he was dead? Yeah, this is all very weird. He knew the guy they worked with at the same location. Hi Take there, a look. I'm Dr. Winnie Hardstrong. I'm running for con Wow, this woman is awake. Let's let's listen to her. I want people who are awake on our show. Congress to represent Missouri, and I was born in Minneapolis. The hospital where George Floyd supposedly took his last breath is where I took my first breath. So I'm very concerned about what's happening right now in my home state. I wanted to ask a few questions, and the thesis of what I have to say today is George Floyd is alive, prove me wrong. I'm an academic, I've studied rhetoric. There's an actual department of rhetoric to study how to use words and reality toward your own advantage. We studied Hitler's rhetoric, I studied all America's founding documents going all the way to the Declaration of Independence and to President Trump's inaugural addresses. I even wrote a children's book on the president and I have some things to say about what's happening right now in our country. I am part of the MAGA movement. There is a concerted effort to quash the MAGA movement. Well, I can't wait to find out more about the MAGA movement, but doesn't that, don't they represent Donald Trump? Why would we want to support a guy who's protecting George Soros right now and allowing bricks to be put in every city in America? Um, I, I don't, I personally don't call this awake. This is more like Trump tarditis to the max. So I'm not sure what that's about, but we'll play it later. If she really is awake, that's great. If she believes that, that George Floyd is alive, that's fine too. But again, we have no proof that he died other than a coroner's report, which we have to believe from a communist state of, of Minnesota, along with a communist mayor, Mayor Fry. Now the Antifa Crats are very active. They're trying to pull the Democratic Party toward the left. Welcome Democrats. Come on into the center of the, of the political movement. We're, we're all about helping the environment. We're all about helping stop homelessness. And unlike Democrats in the past, we don't want a tax to do it. We do want to get money from big companies and corporations much more than they're paying. They don't even pay anything. Jeff Bezos doesn't pay any taxes. So we got a lot of work to do in that department that Bernie was going to start. But you Republicans, welcome to the party too, because I'm going to stand up for your Second Amendment right against the new 5G network, which will be potentially turned into a dangerous weapon. I'm going to be putting uh, limiters and Faraday shields over all the 5G systems if I'm president. We're going to make sure everything's safe for humanity. We don't roll things out in this country without testing it, or at least that's been the past. Now we wonder if that's going to be the future. It looks more like they want us all to just stand there next to the uh, the TV set and remain terrified and question nothing and stay at home. Now, that's not the future from my perspective. We are going to become more aware. We're aware of their stunt that they're trying to create a race war right now. Yes, brutality is a, a serious problem and a lot of white people and Hispanic people and Asian people die from brutality by cops. That's the real issue and Trump won't even address it. Neither will Joe Biden. It's like they want to turn this into a race war, which is no, not really even, even the, the underlying problem going on. Musk is calling for Amazon to break up. Well, I kind of want Amazon to break up too. I think Jeff Bezos has got a monopoly. No, Jimmy Carter is going to live. He is, he's going to he is going to live and he's going to live long. He's going to set records. Jimmy Carter is probably one of the most uh, even-tempered person I've ever seen. Remember when the uh, Illuminati beat him up and he acted like he fell and hit his head on, on some dresser? Can you imagine beating up a man his age? Yeah, because he said some, some something about the president's election not being legitimate. So then the next day he got his eye bashed in. 
I would have I would have just spilled the beans and told the whole truth right there, but no, he's kept a level head the whole time. Jimmy Carter is a pretty pretty tough cookie, I'll tell you that. Right wing Trump tards caught planning to wreak havoc in Vegas. No kidding. They're gonna to try to break up the one thing that they, they rely on for their income, casinos. Wow. Well, I will play that woman from MAGA-land, but seriously, calling her woke and she still supports Donald Trump? Trump supports the 5G network like it was nothing, like it was no big deal. Trump actually believes that uh, George Soros is a good guy. He also simply has nothing bad to say about Bill Gates. So Trump, there's something wrong with Trump. If he doesn't want to call these people out, I would think you, uh, you, uh, an, I guess Q-tards would wake up and realize that. Soros hates Trump to pretend to hate Trump. Soros wants to hate Trump because he, he, Soros thinks that Trump is an idiot. It is political theater, yes. But Soros has this, uh, arrogance about him that you don't find very often on earth there's a few people on earth as arrogant as george soros noam chomsky there's a, bu a bunch of arrogant people out there max egan they're very arrogant why would they put up 5g if it was going to harm themselves it won't be a d designed to harm a a anybody in particular until it actually is targeting somebody. The 5G is it's ideally designed to be a weapon. It was originally developed in the 1970s as a microwave weapon. According to, uh, yeah, an expert on the subject, Barry Trower, we could actually bring you some video from him if you want to validate this, but I don't really need to. We played the video a couple of times already on our show. Well, Trump isn't even a one-term president. I don't even think he'll finish his term. No, I'm urging that the Republicans and Democrats start to move toward re-impeachment right now. He's already proven to have a, an absolute zero knowledge of our constitutional rights. And what Mattis said today uh, will be perhaps the, the icing on the cake. Let's take a look at what Mattis said. It is a big deal. Mattis, Matt, General Mattis' rebuke of Trump kind of spells it all out. Let's take a look. At least we'll learn something, right? His former Secretary of, of Defense publicly criticized the president he once served and never in such harsh, harsh terms. There he is. It's hard to get across what a big deal is that former Defense Secretary James Mattis has not only publicly criticized Trump, but done so in extremely strong terms. In a statement issued Wednesday, Mattis talked about those in office uh, those in office who would make a mockery of our Constitution and said that we are witnessing the consequences of three years without mature leadership. He added that Trump was engaged in deliberate attempts to divide us, something he says no other president in his lifetime has done. I would agree with him on that. Trump is inciting riots. That's the thing. Donald Trump is a threat to the Constitution. Right. A stunning rebuke against the president. Okay. Uh, for the record, Mattis is 69, so he's talking about every president since Harry Truman. I'm not sure that we've ever had a former cabinet secretary criticize a president he or she served this harshly, and certainly not one who is still in office and up for re-election. It's all the more striking coming from a, ge a retired general, a group that tends to be relatively hesitant to jump into politics. Nor is Mattis standing alone. Trump's conduct this week, in particular, his militarized response to what still amounts to a, a lot of peaceful protest and a small amount of criminal activity has also been denounced by former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mike Mullen, and even some of those currently in office. So there's a whole growing group of people in his administration that are look, rebuking him. Now remember, Trump is doing this because he's been told to. Yeah, Trump isn't a freewheeling uh, fascist dictator. He's basically a puppet. If he were a, a freewheeling fascist dictator, we would be in worse condition. 
but because he's a puppet, he does things, whatever they tell him to do. Uh, he owes a lot of people a lot of money, and he especially owes the Russians because they rigged the election in favor of him. And don't say that's not true, because it is true. We have proof, solid proof, in fact, 448 pages of proof that you Republicans claim is fake news. Oh no, you Q-tards go away. Q-tards go home here. We don't allow Q-tards here. Go away. You've been saying, you will see who's wrong, Dave, very soon. You've been waiting for that for three years for Trump to attack the, the deep state. You people are so fooled, it's unbelievable. Pull your brain out of the sludge of moronic thinking that you're currently engaged in. Russia's, how can Russia rig an election? Well, 182 million impressions can be altered on Facebook, which is a fact. And they were all altered by Russians using fake news to trigger all kinds of things. You know, the real critical person uh, in this whole rigging of the election was James Comey. He's the one who's working for Russia. That's what I believe. He's working for the deep state. Yeah, anyway, nothing's coming except your, your demise. Let's watch this. It's coming, Dave, it's coming. No, you're, you're, you mean you're going. You're going to the FEMA camps and your president will send you there. ...of the United States, the former Defense Secretary, General James Mattis, picked by the president himself to lead the Pentagon, issued this statement just a short time ago. I'll quote from it now. Donald Trump, says General Mattis, is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Instead, he tries to divide us. We are witnessing the consequences of three years of this deliberate effort. We are witnessing the consequences of three years without mature leadership, says the general. We can unite without him, drawing on the strengths inherent in our civil society. Okay, so you're ahead of the FEMA camps there, buddy. Yeah, your mindset is wasting time. The longer you wait to start this third party with me, the more you're serving Donald Trump and the fascist New World Order that supports him. The longer you wait to make a commitment out of your party and into this party, this movement, if you will, the longer you do that, the more likely you're going to end up in the FEMA camps. Yep. They're already setting up for it. Voice captures on a New York City police scanner can be heard saying protesters should be shot and run over. Are you serious? See what I mean? Donald Trump set the precedent for this violence. The tone. They loot, we shoot. That, that's the thing that got them all pissed off. Yeah, it's kind of a sad thing because we got a president, that, the first president in history who's inciting riots. He's doing this as part of the New World Order plan. They want to create the riots to take away our, our freedoms. It's that simple. I'm not using slurs against any homosexual. I don't need to go door to door to get votes. I have diarrhea. You have diarrhea. You should change your name. Yeah. It would be foolish for me to do that. Trump hasn't gotten anything done. And again, you Q-tards have waited three years for him to prosecute Hillary. He hasn't done a damn thing. And he's got a real, a real, uh, like a Pillsbury Doughboy there with William Barr. He won't do anything. I will not politicize my office. I mean, my God, he, he already did when he removed all of the evidence that Robert Mueller had written up and acted like it, it exonerated Donald Trump when it didn't. It, it definitely pointed to Donald Trump getting help from the Russians to win the 2016 election. All of it did. Anyway, that's a bigger problem. Okay, here's the audio uh, of this. Let's take a list. listen here. Because I may, I told them that you retreat. Because we cannot lose another life. 
We cannot lose another life. And no matter what, or why I'm out here, and why I'm doing this, we're not going to lose any more lives. He's telling everybody to pull back, that guy. That's smart. Okay, I'm looking for the audio clip. Yeah, it's just not popping. I'm looking for it. It's not. It's not posting here. Oh, I'm not going to worry about it. It only foments more anger. Oh, here it is. That we have a group of people blocking traffic on Albany and Dean Street. They're refusing to let the orange go eastbound on Dean Street and Albany. So we're stuck here. Run them over. Run them over. Okay, so some idiot a dispatcher says run them over and we're supposed to freak out. Yeah, whatever. There's bound to be an idiot somewhere out there. There's always is, always is, right? Okay, if this isn't a tipping point, what is? The Atlanta mayor says maybe she wants the New World Order to come in and set up a whole new uh, government and policing activity like Minneapolis's mayor is asking. Minneapolis is asking the New World Order to come in and set up a, a brand new policing system for him. I may be a handful of things in which I see things as a mother, but my mother called um, my mother called me on yesterday, and I have heard my mother cry maybe a handful of times outside of the death of a loved one. My mother sobbed yesterday when I spoke to her about what she's witnessing, and this is a woman who lived through the civil rights movement in America. And I think her emotions really speak to what's being felt, not just from our young people in this country, but people of all ages. And there has to be a true plan for reconciliation and reform in this country. There was one that was, was left on the president's desk by the Obama Biden administration. And, and I guess it got fouled away in the same way that the pandemic handbook was thrown away. Um, but if, if, if this is, is not a lesson for all of us and a message to all of us that we are at beyond the tipping point in this country, I, I don't know what else, I don't know what else can be said and done. What was your... I think what can be done is we can impeach Donald Trump immediately. It would only take a couple of days. Uh, it would take Senate all of two days to impeach him. Well, the House and the Senate... Yeah, the, the House, House and Senate could, can the move back to could easily it. impeach him again. Yeah, easily. The House needs somebody different than Adam Schiff because Adam Schiff is pretty much working for George Soros. We know that. Donald Trump is close friends with George Soros, and he won't say anything bad about Soros, but he picks on Antifa, Trump does. Very strange. Soros is getting protection from Trump, and that alone tells me that Trump is not some big anti-deep state guy. His oh. simple defense of George Soros and Bill Gates is enough to make you wonder if he's not part of the deep state. 70 cars were stolen from California dealerships during the George Floyd protests. That's not a big deal. I mean, that's nothing compared to what Nancy Pelosi just borrowed $3 trillion or $2.3 trillion. And then uh, there's three men tied to extremists plotting to terrorize Vegas protests. These are right-wing extremists that are trying to terrorize any protests going on in Vegas. Okay. Three men tied to a right-wing extremist group have been arrested on terrorism-related charges. Well, that's good. We don't want to see conflict like that in the streets of Vegas. Not when people want to get good quality, uh, yeah, good quality Casino activity. No free drinks for you. All right. We got a, a hashtag bricks for rioters is the only mention out there on Twitter of all the bricks that were positioned all around the country in every major city. And we have lots of footage. In fact, I put together a one hour video at 153news.net. I'll give you a link to it. This is uh, getting a lot of videos, uh, 500 hits in just 15 hours, so we're doing really well. Let me give you a link to it. 
the name of the video is called government sponsored civil unrest and you can check it out a ball will write that for you huh the government sponsored civil unrest <laughs> Eight ball will write that for you. I'm sure it will, yeah. I don't know, eight ball doesn't pick up every oh, it just does it because censorship kills, yeah. Here's the link if you guys want to watch the video. It's a one hour video. I'll be playing it tonight on the show as well. All right. Here's Sarah for a little bit of a break, R and R from the uh, incredible nightmare of ongoing government sponsored civil unrest. Meghan Markle addresses the death of George Floyd in a heartfelt graduation address. I'll look at that later. See you in a bit. Okay, you're drinking iced tea, Darlene, from South Florida. Is that right, Darlene? South Florida or Darlene's from, Darlene from, yeah, anyway. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. How is the weather down there in South Florida? I, my parents live in uh, New Mexico and it's getting over a hundred where they're at. My sister is in Virginia and she was saying it's in the eighties there. She got out her, uh, a kiddie pool for her grandkids and, um, kind of weird that my sister has grandkids, but yeah, she does. And, uh, yeah. Okay. It's very rainy there. Misanthropy, let's practice mindfulness. Um, um, like that kind of mindfulness? I know, hey Mo, maybe I would put you on a coma with that. Sarah looks like David. DC Riot has final twist as bodyguard reaches explosive climax. Wow, okay. Sarah, when are you getting dreadlocks? Mm, how do how does one get dreadlocks? Don't you have to like get them started somehow? Some kind of twists or something like that? Okay, darling, we'll try not to get you banned here. Lightning and thunder where you are, wow. There's a lot more than just black people that are marching. But I would agree that just one person shouldn't be a martyr. Misanthropy says there's many methods for starting dreadlocks. I don't I don't know. What do you think? I'm glad you like coming here, Darlene. Uh, do you think I should get dreadlocks? Press zero if you think no, and press one if you think yes. Or just type no and yes. Darlene says no. Uh, no, two, one, one. I am here of my own volition, my own free will. I'm here with you, here with David. Twenty-four tin foil two thinks that they they planned all this rioting that they emptied the jails during the COVID crisis in order to make room for the rioters' twenty-four hour stay. Or those are the rioters, the ones they released from jail. I don't know. Twist and pull. Yeah, I don't know about dreadlocks. Sometimes I do when I go to comb my hair. Do you still, I mean, dreadlocks is like creating knots though, right? Because when I go to comb up my hair, I feel like I'm just pulling out tons of hair. Twist and rip. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that to my hair. Hey friends. Um, today is the day that I'm going to... 
Okay, let me mute her and we'll see what she has to say. David does that. Okay, so this girl's going to show me how to make dreadlocks, I guess. I'm here with my friend. No, I have never. Not that I'm aware of. Grab a section of hair, twist it, and then pull two pieces apart. I don't know. I just don't like the look of dreadlocks because it's just on me. It just seems like I already look a little bit like that. Do my hair like hers? She's going to do dreadlocks. You want me to do my hair like that? Oh, okay, I see. You twist it and then you pull it. Oh, that to me is like putting more. That's to me, I don't like that idea of dreadlocks because it's just putting more knots in my hair. And I take enough time when I comb my hair out, which isn't every day, but when I comb my hair out, it takes a long time to pull the knots out. I don't want to put knots in. Uh, no, I'm not getting dreadlocks. Not gonna happen. I don't want to do that. You prefer the crochet hook method? That sounds like okay. The knots are easy to get out until they tighten. Isn't that the point of dreadlocks though? They tighten in and you want them to tighten in something like that. I don't know. I mean, this girl's dreadlocks look really good or look pretty good. Some people claim their hair is thicker, healthier, and definitely longer when they brush it out. The trick is to start at the very bottom of the dread with something like a tweezer or a comb with a metal end. You pick out the very, you stick it into the very bottom, like right before the end, and then you pull down, and that will undo one knot at a time. You go up and you do that again. Wow. I like how her ends aren't burned or blunted. I actually like that about her dreadlocks. Can you wash your dreadlocks? Or how do you wash them? The answer, easily whenever I want, and yeah, again. So what you do is mostly focus on washing your scalp when you do wash your hair, and you only need to do it when you want or if something gross happens. Um, but, you know, pretty much after a month in, your hair doesn't get greasy anymore. It's pretty much adjusted to it. Wow. You feel like her, her, her dreadlocks look sloppy? I felt like the other girl's dreadlocks look sloppy.
You used to spend 10 hours a week on your hair? Wow. All right, I'm going to pause this. It's interesting. I just don't see, I don't see, no. I've already decided I will not be getting dreadlocks, though. I know the first girl's hair was not real dreads yet. We are here. Where are you? Are you at the protest, 211? Oh, wait. Let me look up what do cornrows look like. Maybe I should get those. You think David needs cornrows? Maybe I need that. I would definitely get cornrows before I got dreadlocks, but that would require a very amazing professional hairstylist. I mean, my goodness, the way they do hair is just amazing. Yeah, I do like cornrows. Those are good. But you're right, cornrows, I'm like, how did that, ugh, that does hurt your scalp. They look amazing though. Like that is, that's just an amazing picture right there. Or, I mean, this one's really cool. I like that a lot. But man, that's really tight. It's like these, the, the people, I know some kids, I've had them and they're like, oh, my head hurts because I have the cornrows. Uh, Iverson cornrows, okay. Oh, wow, that is, that is so cool. Like this one right here, this third one in, or this first one. He's got some great cornrows. I love that. It's like art on your hair. Even just a normal one like this. 40 of the coolest Iverson braids to try. Whoa, look at that one. That is art. To me, I would totally prefer cornrows rather than dreads because it's just like so artistic uh now i'm not getting cornrows but if i ever paid a barber that's what i would do though no i will never get a tattoo either no dreads no tattoos cornrows maybe one time somebody did put little tiny braids all over my hair. The thing is I can't even like French braid my own hair. So I can't, obviously I can't give myself do cornrows on my own hair. It's $30 at a barber college to get cornrows. Hmm. 316 says this conversation makes me think of V-Rail. The V-Rail project? Well, he's been doing this for a long time, more than a decade, Peter Peters. The caster. She has dreads. I do not have dreads. Does it look, really look like I have dreads? I don't. Oh, V real the caster. I don't know the caster V real.
All right. Do half cornrows and half reds? Maybe. Can I play that? No, I can't play a Weird Al Yankovic song right now. I can do it maybe at 8 o'clock, but not right now. Uh, no, I don't want David. David will not be growing a mullet either. Yes, that's true. I would agree with that uh, statement. People's freedom of speech and freedom of belief is protected by the First Amendment. Yeah, it is funny. Uh, does David wear bell bottoms? No, but my pants are kind of that I'm wearing now kind of have like a bell bottom on them. Not really a bell bottom, more like a boot cut. Yeah, they're trying misanthropy. I don't think it's going to work. Al Sharpton March announces a new March on Washington led by families of black people that have been killed by police. been watching the news all day. I've been busy working on schoolwork, but I obviously I'll pay attention to the news. Well, not obviously, but I'll probably pay more attention um, after when summer officially starts. My summer doesn't officially start till June 20 on till June 20th. Yeah, good question, misanthropy. Uh, no, how dare you? I'm not old enough to be the woman in the Sloopy video. She's a lot older these days. I, I wouldn't say, I don't think I'm obsessed with misanthropy. I have found that he usually has intelligent chat. And so I usually respond to that. Uh, no, David's not buying any sparklers for 4th of July. What do you think of this uh, Senators Harris and, and Cory Booker trying to pass a bill to make lynching a federal crime? Thanks for liking my show over at iBlog. It does seem to be about looting and causing damage for some people. Definitely not, how dare you. David's not a sparkler kind of guy. Yeah, it is all about following a trend, I feel like, the protests. Uh, 
Um, I think it was a state crime. And it says they're speaking out against a Rand Paul amendment. Let me look at some of this news. would place a greater burden on victims of lynching than is currently required under federal hate crimes laws. There is no reason for this. There is no reason other than cruel and deliberate obstruction on a day of mourning. On this very day, at this very hour, there is a memorial service to honor the life of George Floyd who was murdered on a sidewalk by a police officer with a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46. There's no reason for this. There's no reason for this. So Let me see. Oh, There's no... That was ABC News. This is their There's an amendment GOP I see Senator Rand this legislation, Paul of Kentucky. Not because I take it or I take lynching lightly, but because I take it seriously. He was and trying this legislation to does not. add to anti This is a tool of terror that claimed the lives of nearly 5,000 Americans between 1881 and 1968. But this bill would cheapen the meaning of lynching by defining it so broadly as to include a minor bruise or abrasion. Our nation's history of racial terrorism demands more seriousness from us than that. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote in his autobiography about the 1899 lynching of Sam Hose in Georgia. Du Bois wrote that after the lynching, Hose's knuckles were viewed on display at a store in Mitchell Street in Atlanta. So, Rand Paul said that it's the bill so there's popular bipartisan legislation to make lynching a federal crime and it passed in the house like 400 to something 400 to 4 or something and then it went to the Senate and Rand Paul said oh well we're going to add a an amendment to it because he felt that the bill was overly broad And he, his amendment would apply the criminal penalties for, would apply the criminal penalties for lynching, not for other crimes.
is David binge watching old reruns? No. David is doing things around the house. That's what he's doing. That's what he always does uh, when I give him a break. That's a good question. What is their exact definition of lynching? Supposedly, um, Rand Paul says it will, it would, their definition would become like a minor, minor scrape or abrasion. A minor bruise or abrasion would be considered lynching. I know that does sound odd. I'd have to, I guess I'll have to read the, Paul told the uh, Rand Paul said he wants the bill to be stronger. They think that lynching is an awful thing and it should be roundly condemned and should be universally condemned. He addressed the problems he sees with the bill, which passed the House on in February. February there was a vote four hundred ten to four. Senate supporters hoped to pass it unanimously until he objected. It would have a 10 year penalty for a bru for lynching, which could be a minor bruise. He said he wants to make the bill stronger. The bill as written would allow altercations resulting in a cut, an abrasion, a bruise, or any other injury, no matter how temporary, to be subject to a 10-year penalty. His amendment would simply apply a serious bodily injury standard, which would ensure crimes resulting in substantial risk of death and extreme physical pain be prosecuted as lynching, not something that has a cut, abrasion, or bruise. That's what he said on Wednesday. The language of the House bill, was, which was named for Emmett Till, is very similar to another anti-lynching bill that did pass in the Senate last year by unanimous consent. That was authored by the only three African Americans currently serving in the Senate. Republican Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina and Democratic Senators Kamala Harris of California and Cory Booker of New Jersey. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell also from Kentucky, could take procedural steps to overcome Ron Rand Paul's objection and force a vote on the bill, but that could take up days of floor time. The House could also take up the Senate passed bill, the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act, and send that to President Donald Trump's desk. But Democratic leaders there have expressed a desire for the Senate to pass their bill in order to keep Till's name in the title. The text of the House legislation outlines the violent and racist legacy of lynching in the United States and the many earlier and 
unsuccessful attempts to enact federal anti-lynching legislation into law. So, can I show you a picture of people protesting? Let's go to YouTube and see what's live there. Uh, YouTube. I, well, that's Canada, but... Cory Booker was trying to run for president. That's true. Rand Paul, I don't know if he ever was. His father, Ron Paul, was trying to run. This is a protest in I Israel. That is interesting. Look at all their social, they are socially distancing. These people are definitely socially distancing. How, they stood two meters away from each other. How did they? Like, I guess there's some markings on the floor so that they are on their streets so that they know they're two meters away. I don't think that's going to happen. I have interesting idea, though. I do like the idea of digging up the background for a pool, but no, no inviting kids over. So Tel Aviv's Rabin Square is often a staging ground for rallies. Tens of thousands flocked to the plaza to protest police restrictions on music festivals last year. The year before saw gay rights activists turn up to shout down a controversial, controversial surrogacy law. Sunday saw a gathering unlike any other crowds of protesters Estimated by liberal newspaper Haratz at more than 2,000 stood two meters apart from each other. Their places marked on the ground with black crosses. The gathering part of Israel's ongoing black flag demonstrations was sanctioned by police as long as social distancing rules were followed to the letter and as long as organizers shelled out to supply the protest protesters with protective face masks. They spent a day marking the area with X's for people to stand on in order to keep social distancing in place. Wow. Here's another, whoa, look at this. This is a image from Tel Aviv's Rubin Square. That's really amazing.
Whereas here, when they protest here, there's no social distancing at all. What, Joe? I don't think I understand you. What? There's bricks in the Best Buy parking lot. Why? It's not like they're building anything. Why do you think they're there, Vorpal Bite? Thanks for sharing that. Scientists say invisible aliens live among us. Or maybe too many useless academics live among us. What is a meter? A meter is a little more than three yards. A meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I got rid of the picture behind me, misanthropy. <laughs> and actually, I should be saying sorry, Joe. The CDC director says the George Floyd protests could be a coronavirus seeding event. Yeah, wait till June 20th. We'll see if there's a spike. Yeah, the people wearing my masks need to stand one Sarah length apart. The Secret Service says it did not use tear gas when Lafayette Park was cleared before the Trump visit. Hmm. Oh, maybe the Secret Service didn't use it. Maybe it was the police? Flash, flash grenades instead? Not, not, definitely not tear gas. Smoke bombs, maybe? Mass arrests jeopardizing the health of protesters and police. Protesters start problems and then they get upset when they get tear gassed. New York protesters say they're facing two deadly pandemics, racism and coronavirus. Okay, so Putin declared a state of emergency after a massive fuel leak polluted a river in the Arctic Circle. Oh, man. Yeah. What about all the other people who've died? 
their lives matter too. Yeah, all the people that um, there's lots of people who have died, and the especially even at the hands of police and other else otherwise too. It's like George Floyd was a straw, the final straw when there's lots of other things. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I'm laughing at, um, misanthropy. I'm laughing at you because he's like, you, everybody's messed up and don't get mad at one pe group of people for the way to choose. They choose to show how they're messed up. Of course, he used different language than that, but. So much rage. Okay, so that's interesting. That's awesome. The court has blocked the sale of a bear weed killer in the United States. Thank goodness. Signal uh, has an update that makes blurring faces easy. Apple is tracking the iPhones that were stolen from its stores. You don't trust signal I could see why probably well three two zero and also there's uh people there's also, I would say there's just a whole group of people that have become dominant in this time. Protesters, protesting is not illegal. I think I'm not, well, I would say there are certain other things that could be illegal, like Um, if there's certain like quiet times or something like that there's also but the the right where they're actually defacing buildings or breaking into buildings that's illegal if they have the intent to commit a crime that would be illegal but if they have the intent just to assemble to 
say how they feel, that would not be illegal. Even though it's strange, the, civil, the Supreme Court just said that um, churches couldn't open if, like, if that was deemed that due to coronavirus could be a reason that they can prevent churches from opening, but yet, anyway. Yeah, yet they opened a church for George Floyd today, and they had a lot of people violating the social distancing rules. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of hypocritical in a way. And no one had an open, ca there was no open casket, so no one ever got to see his body, so we don't know if he's really dead. I don't. You may not, you may not. I will say David is the only one that I know of that questions whether he's a, he, he's dead. Do some of you question? He, press 1 if you question whether he's alive or not. Press 0 if you believe he's dead. Yeah, press 0 if you believe he's dead. Press 1 if you believe he's alive. All right. Scissor Fight believes he's alive. Lego Injury says he's dead. Misanthropy says he's alive. I'm with Dave. Guess 243 says he's alive. There you go. Okay. I guess Dave See, I'm not, not the, the only, only one, one, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Good luck eating that chicken and enjoy as much as you want of it. I don't really care. And help yourself to all the sweet potatoes. Okay. Thank you. And there's veggies too. Thank you. All right. Yeah. It's, we're kind of an even 50 50 on this. We're going to split. What about D Live? Crypto Kid said he's alive. Yeah, the the Masonic connections makes people wonder if he's you know, not not alive. The fact that they knew each other on a job makes it very suspicious. And did you know that the Asian is is actually Chauvin's wife's brother? That's an interesting little side note. Yeah. The Asian cop who was very short in the video is actually Chauvin's wife's soon to be ex wives because she's divorcing him. It's a brother. Nice, tight little family in a, a city of 500,000 people. Kind of odd, don't you think, that they all know each other so well? And his family, and especially his little daughter, are way too happy about his death. Do you have any video of his little daughter? Because I haven't seen that picture of her smiling and going, Yeah, I'm so sorry, my daddy died. No, I'm sure he, I cooked it well, but help yourself to all of it. I, I just, I'm not that concerned. I can always pick the bones apart. Every single bone will be a especially delectable. Yeah, if your girlfriend just netted at 13 million, I thought it was up to 15 million now. No, I didn't cut my hair. I just, I washed it and it came out weird in the back here because I had my hat on. My colic kind of kicked in. So I'm going to go ahead and start this over here. Yeah, they're making money out of the whole situation. It's like any other false flag. What you just said was disturbing. No, I didn't say pick Sarah's bones. I said pick the bones of the, chi of the chicken. Yeah, Sarah's no longer eating it so I'll just you know I'll gnaw on the bones for a while break them open and suck the marrow out yeah oh you don't do that with every piece of, of food you have okay good luck I have millions of viewers don't say thousands that's that's just an underestimate David George Floyd was friends with Stephen Jackson a former multi-million dollar NBA player that once started his riot this riot during a basketball game. Really? I did not know that a guy started a riot and George was involved. This is exciting. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that unless I go to the other room. Let's do that. Well, all five stars, the 
you know, they'll monetize me if I play more than three seconds of this video. Yeah, believe it or not, they'll monetize me. So uh, apparently there was a big, huge riot at a, at a Pacers game, and, and he was there. No, I, I'm going for a, you know, a, a youth, more youthful look. I, I felt that the bangs were a little long. Yeah. And I felt that you're going with a, a tighter haircut made me feel a little younger, being I'm getting younger. Well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the guy needed some money. He might have cooked up a really good plan with Chauvin going, yeah, man, I know, I know some people that, you know, they want, you know, want to promote racial violence and uh, they thought maybe I could, uh, you know, hang out with, you, maybe you'd be a, an ex-cop, you could pretend to be a cop, you know what I'm saying? And we all do, like a video thing. I make a lot of money doing that, man. No, Sarah's not half my age. She's 18 years younger than me. You have been banned. His friend Steven Jackson was the one that started the riot. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, a lot of a lot of stage play with 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 George Floyd. He was a high school drama guy, man. That's why he got into Pono. I'm just saying. And if he did die, I'm very sorry for his family's loss. I just want to go on record. But if they're all happy about it, maybe they're happy about the money they made and the fact that they're going to meet him in the Bahamas in about two weeks. Oh, I wasn't supposed to let that out. Hmm, sorry. Flight 47. Anyway, uh, so you want to talk about Osama bin Laden? That seems like a more intelligent discussion. He's still alive. He's living in the Bahamas. They have a place for everybody who lives through these uh, false flags. It's a little uh, CIA retreat, kind of like Club Med, but they call it Club Dead. Investigation launched after Sarasota police officer kneels on man's neck during an arrest probe. Oh, not again. I mean, do we need another race war? I mean, the last one with Charlie Manson lasted about two seconds. Remember when he wrote Helter Skelter on the, or not he did, but Squeaky Fromm wrote Helter Skelter on the LaBianca's window. Remember that? No, you weren't You weren't even alive. That's the same kind of thing going on here. It's just, they're trying to create a race war. Kind of like Charlie did. Stephen Jackson, twin of George Floyd, speaks at a rally after police officer charged with murder. Are you serious? He's his twin? Now that's a little too coincidental. Is a twin brother? Oh my God. You are clearly trying to troll me. I am clearly stopping you at every turn. Stephen Jackson, twin of George Floyd, speaks at a rally after police officer charged with murder. Wow. Of uh, 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 George Floyd, my twin. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when police do things that they know that's wrong, Hey guys, could we verify he has a twin? Check his birth records? Because, yeah, all of this looks like George Floyd. I. The first thing they try to do is cover it up mm -hmm. and bring up your background mm -hmm. to make it seem like the book that they did, that they did was worthy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm beginning to think that maybe George Floyd is posing as his twin because he didn't want to go through all that Jeffrey Epstein facial reconstructive surgery stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now, you want Floyd's daughter? You're going to speak up too? I. We all dedicating this evening to finding out more about George Floyd. Now, if I do use a little bit of a different language and I talk more like a black man, it's because I am paying homage to black people. It is imitation is the highest form of flattery. And I'm trying to make everybody understand that I am truly, truly trying to understand your, what's going on. Because it is more than a race war here. This is a brutality issue. There's way more important brutality. Whites and blacks. No, I'm not talking racist. I'm talking get down and dirty. This is what Barack Obama did when he went to the white people and said, well, make no mistake about it. Uh, I look and talk like a white person, but I'm actually black. And Michael, I mean, Michelle, my transgender, uh, well, not really.
Black Lives Matter is mostly white people. So yeah, send my blackface video to it. Go for it. Yeah, it's mostly white people in the Black Lives Matter movement. White Jewish people mostly. How can we foment a problem and make it our issue and then exploit it to make more money? Think about that. You know, I would. I've talked like that in front of a black man. I knew a big black guy. I hung out with him in, uh, at the airport in L.A. A couple days. He took me on his tour. He said I was the strangest person he ever met. He told me that. He said, you're, the, you're the strangest person I ever met, man. I said, well, man, it's cool. It's cool. You don't mind if I talk like you. He said, man, y'all, y'all strange, man. Yeah, I called myself Abdul at the time. Well, I wanted to fit into the African-American community, so I went by the name of Abdul Lumumbo. Buwana Abdul Lumumbo, actually. Yeah, definitely show it. Well, now you're, now you're asking me to do that. Yeah. Trump says National Guard cut through protests like butter. I know. And you know, do we need a president like that? Seriously? That threatens people? No. Could you please impeach him? Thank you. Now, I, I believe that we may have just looked at the real, the real George Floyd. Finding out he has a twin brother at this late stage, I don't know. I, I, I can't believe I'm reading a comic. I, I just can't believe I'm even looking at that right now. When I'm, I want to look at the child world star here. Yeah, she she's going to talk about her dad, George Floyd's daughter. Yeah, I want to see that. Here we go, everybody. He did what? He did what? He did what? Is that George Floyd's twin brother who happens to look just like George Floyd? <laughs> So she's all happy that daddy changed the world. So it's not like she's su suffering from any grief. It seems like the child is completely adapted to the fact that her father has died. And it's such a horrible way of going too. And I understand the sister didn't even see the video until she's told to see it on the camera. And she said, oh yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. That poor kid looked terribly traumatized. Yeah. Sarcasm. Could we just bring in more links faster and, and just, you know, really kind of overwhelm me with hundreds of links? That's the best way to, you know, troll our show. Yeah, just hit me with hundreds. Absolutely. I can absorb all of this information. My primary processor can respond to a million messages per second. Okay, please plow into a, a group of people. Yeah, this is in Brooklyn. Okay, you get that lunging feeling. You get that feeling of lunging. I know I do. Yeah, I just want everyone to know that I'm dedicated to freedom of speech. You know, if I use a strange way of speaking at times, and I have impersonated Barack Obama in blackface, I'll admit that, and I'm proud of that fact. I believe in free speech. I believe if you're a white man and you want to impersonate another person of any type, you can do that. If you're a black man and want to impersonate a white man, you can do that too. So I recommend anything you want to do is okay, except work for Acme Brick and order all these bricks to be put in front of all the cities. That was a bad thing, whoever did that. Now, Barack Obama is, uh, 
as you know, no longer our president, but he made a speech the other day that looked very similar to a guy who's suffering from a severe crack addiction. Poor lives matter. People killed by police. The Guardian. People arrested by police. Aggravated assault. Statistics that are hard to read. Thank you. I'm not really sure what I was reading, nor do I care. If I want to find out about a neighborhood I'm shopping at, I would go to Trulia.com and just go to the, uh, the crime statistics. When I buy a block of city block, I usually go to the crime statistics to see how very dangerous the neighborhood is. Do you drive a Honda? I do, yeah. Piles of unattended bricks around the University of Toronto. More of that. Wow, okay, Miss Hansberry. There's more unattended bricks, folks. Apparently, the Acme Brick Company has been busy. Eh? And the mainstream media has not covered the story that bricks were in front of all these protests. Isn't this amazing how ridiculous the mainstream media is? It is the worst. I mean, I was the, the original guy to out what you call the fake news. But CNN called it the fake news, and they're the fake news, ironically. Well, except when it comes to talking about the terrible disaster of using tear gas. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, seconds up. Let's go there right now. An emotional debate over anti-lynching legislation as Cory Booker and Kamala Harris speak out against Rand Paul? Huh. I, I didn't even know this existed. Now we're gonna to go to the actual riot itself. Now you take a look at this and tell me if there's actually rubber bullets and tear gas in the video. Use your visual ability on your internet. Here we go. You're watching CNN. You tell me if you see at least tear gas. I do, but you tell me if you do. Police dispersed peaceful protesters with tear gas, flash grenades, and rubber bullets just outside the White House gates. Okay, now we went there and then we went over to uh, Mark Esper, our Secretary of Defense, and he categorically said... At Park and at St. John's Episcopal Church. What I was not aware of to many of the locations at which they were posted. I also want to address a few other matters that have been raised about that evening. First, National Guard forces did not fire rubber bullets or tear gas into the crowd as reported. Okay, so what did we see exactly, Mark? Are you a liar, Mark? Seriously, do we really need a liar? I don't care if you're a West Point graduate, you just lied to the American people because we saw rubber bullets, or at least some of us did, and definite tear gas. Now, why don't we talk about the Acme Brick thing? That's more important. You know who funds Acme Brick? Berkshire Hathaway. Hello. Hello, Candace. And guess who's on the board of, of directors who runs and owns Acme Brick of Berkshire Hathaway would be George Soros. And their main office is in you guessed it, Springfield, Minnesota, the same location as Antifa. Are you hearing me? Okay, let's listen to this young lady who's a, a YouTube star or something. I'm not sure what she is. Let's take a look. A Facebook family. Um, I have decided to do this video. It has been weighing very heavily on my heart um, and on my mind as well. And Great, uh, an African-American woman who says that George Floyd is not a martyr. Thank you. This will be very good for us tonight to learn a different perspective. We heard another African-American woman say that she's not- and It was something that I wanted to say earlier. She's not a supporter of Black Lives Matter because she's black and she doesn't think there's a big racial issue. She knows that she, she's got a job in America and she's happy. It's, the, it's the, really the brutality issue that we should be focusing on, including you rioters. Not the racial issue. I, I. Wall Street giant fight faces bipartisan fire and running unprecedented Fred federal bailout. Well, it does look like we need a bailout. Well, she looks happy, yeah. 
on, but there were so many emotions and so much pressure um, for me to go with the popular opinion about who George Floyd was. She kind of looks like Michael Jackson when he was a kid, you know? Remember that? Michael Jackson? Early in his life? Yeah, Candace Owens. Yeah, I've seen I've seen her on Twitter a couple times, but his younger pictures, he looks a lot like that. Oh my God. We got a pos positive match, yeah. It's, it's Michael Jackson. Wow. That's a pretty close, yeah, very close. Like this this picture, she's a little older, obviously she's an adult, she's not a kid, but there's not a similar look, look at that. That's a young Michael Jackson. Anyway, we'll listen to Candace Owens a little bit later. Hey, are any of you getting that, that smell of, of COVID-19 when you go outside anymore? You notice how it's coming back? I wonder if they're spraying the uh, virus again. I wonder if they're doing another round of sprays. We may want to go back to wearing our masks again, in case you haven't. Woman tears down George Floyd Memorial while talking about George Soros. Well, that's interesting. Do not do this! This is interesting. Now, this is very, very uh, in demand. We're going to zoom in on it because it's a fairly small picture and give you the best possible view. Then, then put up your own stuff. This is not. This is my freedom of speech. This is my freedom. This is my freedom of speech. This was staged by Antifa and George Soros. You don't need to violent. Oh my God! You don't need to violent. You are being violent. Get out of here. Get the violence out of here. Get the violence out of here. What are you doing? You are doing it. You are brainwashed. This was staged by George Soros. Stop! He's still alive. So her freedom of speech is ripping the other woman's freedom of speech down. <laughs> That's a little twisted, don't you think? Hey, be careful. Uh, you know, a lot of you people are spreading a lot of hatred towards people of the opposite race. Do you really think you want to foment a race war and, and do what George Soros wants you to do? Why do you think smart? Be smart. Think smart. Transcend all this. George Soros wants people to beat up opposite races. They do. George Soros wants this whole thing to go down. That's why they funded it with bricks in front of every city. Duh. Now you're just spreading hate. That's your problem. Okay, uh, another investigation of the Sarasota cop. Okay, here we go again. Boy, this is the news item that just keeps popping up in front of us. Somebody used the same technique against somebody's neck. I, even after all this investigation. Sarasota Police Department, New York. They put the officer on administrative leave. Look at look at how they're abusing this black person. See, this is exactly what this is exactly what the media wants. They want to foment this stuff. But this is going on. Let's not forget it. It is happening. People are being brutalized. So it's not like we want to ignore it either. The Ron Paul says the incredible disappearing coronavirus narrative has failed. Yeah, I said that before Ron Paul, so I beat him to it. She could be a manly woman, a woman who's manly in, in nature. Oh, God. Ron Paul, okay, we're going to take a look at that, I guess. Uh, is that something I could click on later? Oh my God, they're using, yeah, look at that. They're dealing on the guy's neck. Look at this. Well, that guy should be arrested or take, the cop should be taken off the farce. This is not an approved way of, of holding somebody down. You see that? And according to the Minnesota, Minneapolis Police Department, they weren't allowed to do that. And by the way, Minneapolis will be replacing their entire police force with a group called the Gestapo. 
Uh, for lack of a better word right now, I'll call them the New World Order Gestapo will be coming into Minneapolis. The mayor just announced they're going to replace their entire police department. It'll be a New World Order, kind of a goose-stepping Gestapo organization. I wouldn't doubt they privatize it and the Rothschilds hire a secret force to control the city. Okay, we got this going on. Metro supervisor car burning down. Seattle, Washington. Yeah, we... A lot of these fires have been started by the cops. We played you one last night in New York that was started by the cops. It's crazy. We showed you the cops planting bricks the other night too. Don't forget that, folks. They're behind this. The cops are trying to foment the crisis. They want us to lose our freedoms. They want to have martial law. Remember, the cops want more power, and the only way they get it is by you reacting and getting pissed off and acting all you know, like you're going to go after somebody from the opposite race of your own personal race. We're all in a race together. It's called a human race. Meghan Markle addresses death of George Floyd in a heartfelt graduation address. Because George Floyd's life mattered and bringing class of 2020. For the past couple... This is kind of like the... Uh, the Tom Hanks video to the class skyline the other day. What is this, late Illuminati hour? Couple weeks I've been planning on saying a few words to you for your graduation. And as we've all seen over the last week, what is happening in our country and in our state and in our hometown of LA. Has what do you mean your hometown of LA, man? Y'all live in England, man. What are you doing in LA for? She doesn't live in LA. She calls it her hometown. That's so funny. She's me. I'm her. Am I? Wow. I'm Megan Miracle. Boy, you're probably one of those mind control guys who make you think that you're Megan Miracle. Stunning and brave. I have all kinds of colors in my TV. I have, I have a color TV. Undercover video shows Antifa learning how to eye gouge. Oh yeah, who doesn't want to do eye gouging? Veritas does a little bit of a search for uh, the clues as to who's funding Antifa and why they're, the arch leftists are pushing this agenda. Well, of course, they're doing it for the New World Order, right? Well, they want these Antifa people who are paid very well to really hurt people. So O'Keefe's Project Veritas shows an instructor for the far-left militant movement Antifa teaching newcomers how to injure people. Let's take a look. I've been undercover with Real City Antifa since July of 2000. Depending on the setting, if I were to be caught or found out in a setting where I am present with them, it could escalate to violence against me. Don't be that f***ing guy with the goddamn spiked brass knuckles getting photos taken on you. Police are going to be like, perfect, we can cross. To become a full-fledged member of Antifa. If you ruin their day, if you like heckle them, you make them feel like they look ridiculous. You make them feel outnumbered, and therefore their whole yay, yay, America, Trump thing is going to go by the wayside. Uh, they reached out to me through Proton Mail, and we went back and forth, and there was a, an, an interview set to meet up in Portland. So to verify that it was me, they had me wear a white shirt and have a water bottle and show up at a Starbucks where a person was going to ID me and approach me and asked who I was and I told them and I f followed them to the destination where the interview was going to be held. Well, we'll have more of this tonight. This looks pretty good. Yeah. Exposing the Antifa movement. Now they're recruiting innocent people out there trying to maneuver their socialist ways. It's, it's it, They're being hijacked by the rich globalists, too. The globalists are using communism as a way of controlling our country through the Antifa movement. They have money talks. It turns out communists and socialists can be bought off. Capitalists can be bought off. It doesn't matter what your political bend is. A lot of people are bought off. I can't be because I'm unviable. That's a quality in my personality that's impregnated 
in my being. I made a vow of poverty at a young age. I've dedicated my life to a, a goal that is truly a, almost impossible. I'm not likely to jump ship either because this goal is so important to me. I've had people offer me $300 million to stop doing what I'm doing, twice. And I said, no, I won't take money to stop this. This effort is too important. We have to stop the new world order. We have to stop them in their attempt to create this police state that they're trying to create right now. You're in the midst of history being made right now. Yeah, you can be bought off for 10 bucks, but you're not like me. David, did you see pink stupid comment? She said, you're not American if you support Trump. Well, you know, at this point, the, the irony is we're trying to convert a lot of Trump supporters over to our side because remember, Trump did steal 15 of my ideas. So a lot of them like my fence idea, the thousand mile fence that Trump hasn't built more than 133 miles of. We're still kind of carrying that load of, of Trump supporters. So they are American, but they just don't see it the way you guys do. And they fell into the trap of believing Trump or the Q-tard movement. Either way, they're, they're lost right now. We're trying to get them back. Target closes 175 stores nationwide after Minneapolis protests. That does not surprise me. The looting alone put them back a couple of years. They're going to have to get their insurance payments from the, uh, the insurance company to cover their losses. Impacted employees will be paid up to 14 days of their I scheduled to hours. The Angeles right now. Um, because there are a lot of domestic concerns in our economy um, because rioting isn't only going on in Hong Kong for very different reasons around the Minneapolis area because of the, uh, the, the killing of this uh, African-American uh, gentleman earlier this week. Uh, it led to a lot of riots uh, and it's already uh, focused on Target having to temporarily shut down a number of stores. Jackie, what, what can you tell us? Good afternoon to you, Neil. Well, just when you thought that the retailers couldn't take another blow, a lot of the emotions really spiking here, causing these riots, not just in Minneapolis over the death of George Floyd, but also um, across the country. And so what Target is doing specifically there, because it's the worst right now, is closing down its stores in Minneapolis, um, you know, to be able to ensure the safety of employees and consumers who come out to shop there as well. Um, Target closed 24 stores there in total. And in a statement, it said, we are heartbroken by the death of George Floyd and the pain it is causing our community. At this time, we've made the decision to close a number of our stores until further notice. Our focus will remain on our team member safety and helping our community heal. Now, Target... Okay, so and the more people are realizing the need to unite in the center of the political spectrum and that the two parties were sold out, the more people are realizing the need for a third party. I think that's very important. You know, I'm not here to take sides on the racial issue because I don't have any racial hostility toward anyone. I'm here to actually talk about the brutality. Our police have been way too brutal for too long. And if we don't deal with that fact, it doesn't matter what color you are, you're going to get beaten up by cops. So that's a big problem. We also have a police state that's forming like with a new, uh, new brand of police officers they're going to bring into Minneapolis. These people will be trained in all kinds of new technologies, things that could be weaponized, like the 5G network. Active denial systems could be in place. I'm surprised Trump didn't order them. We could have easily seen active denial systems in place. What we need is a, a show of force to stop this, obviously, in Minneapolis, in cities, but now you find out the DC rioters were just released back into the street. You'd think Trump would have said something, right? He didn't even tell the D.C. Uh, government to, to not release the rioters. So Trump can't even manage things in his own backyard right now. St. Louis rioters that were the most violent of any area in the country are now back on the street. You see, this is a concerted effort by our government to install civil unrest in our country and create problems because they want martial law. They want to take away our freedoms completely. Now, some people aren't playing around. They'll stand up and guard their businesses. Hi, we're right here downtown. Everybody's out, strapped. I guess there's this big rumor that people from uh, Spokane are going to come out here and act up and try to riot. But that shit ain't going to happen. <laughs> they're ready. They're, they're armed up. They're ready to go. The whole area. Uh, there's a lot of areas in Idaho and Washington. 
Uh, they're just they they allow open carry. So you know the idea of BLM supporters coming in there, and most of these Black Lives Matter supporters are white Jewish people. By the way, it's kind of ironic. The real, real honest black people who don't don't want to turn this into a race race problem. It's only people trying to exploit it. You know that's exactly what the Zionists did with the Jewish situation back in the uh, 1890s. Well, Jews and, and Muslims always got along, and then along came this group of people called the Zionists, and we're talking you know over 100 years ago. The Zionists decided to glob on to the Jew, the poor Jewish, the the terrible feeling people had about Jewish people being imprisoned and slaves for so long. They felt that they needed to give the Jewish people something else, and that's when they created the Balfour Declaration. Jacob Rothschild was involved in that. He's still alive too, and the Balfour Declaration essentially was designed to to create a state of Israel for the Jewish people. But it was the people exploiting the Jewish people that wanted the state of Israel. It was the people exploiting the Jewish people. They weren't even Jewish. The Rothschilds were Germans. They were considered court Jews. To this day, they're still considered court Jews. They're not technically Jewish. They're not the Jewish royalty of the past. So they systematically uh, created, they rode on the backs of the Jewish plight throughout history. To this day, they're doing it again with the plight of the black people. The same exact technique. The poor black people driving a wedge between blacks and whites. This, this Zionist element is still very active in our country. In fact, perhaps the reason why we're in this big plan, this controlled psyops, this attack against the people. It could very well be the same people, the Zionists. Remember, Biden is a Zionist. Trump is a Zionist. Adolf Hitler was a Zionist. People don't know that. Yeah, he believed in that plan too. Believe it or not, Hitler wanted to create a state of Israel. He wanted to take over Jerusalem. He believed the Ark of the Covenant was located there. And that's why he wanted to control that region. So it's ironic that this Zionist element is creating all this racial hostility. There was no major problem between Muslims and, and Jews prior to the Zionists in the 1890s. Anyway, along came 1918. 1918 was a, a pivotal year. Remember the Spanish flu? Yeah. Turns out that was caused by a bad vaccination created by the Rockefellers. They destroyed Los Angeles, I know. It's ironic the people at George Floyd's funeral were not social distancing, nor were they wearing masks. I don't understand why. And you know, George Floyd was not seen. It was not an open casket funeral. So we don't even know if he was in the casket. What's going on over here? A weekend with Chopper Reed, a 21 minute conversation. All right. Not sure what's going on there, but yeah. So when will it be out? Well, when it's going to be out? Three. It's in the year 2000. Oh, don't. It was basically just two guys getting drunk with 1 million views. Okay. What is this all about? A little background. Oh, preparing for his role as Chopper in the movie. Yeah, that's not really important here. You're that UK guy who continually puts out Why ridiculous... So I'm so irrelevant links. I don't want to watch, watch irrelevant links here. Why do the George Floyd protests resonate so strongly in the UK? Maybe there's a racial issue going on there. They like to exploit that. Oh, not forever. I'm a black male. I've gone through this my whole life. Never asked for any of it. It's a big problem, but the smaller problems that go on every single day that people need to understand that this is how small problems become big problems. You see, really, we're, many people are at protest for a couple of reasons. Some people are protest because they really support their rights to freedom to protest and not be locked down. 
Some people protest because they really are upset about brutality by cops. And some people protest because they really don't like people of the opposite race. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people protest, but ironically, it's all getting grouped together into the rioting over race. That's what a lot of this boils down to. And that's a terrible thing because it's not really what's happening. That's how the media can really fan the flame of hatred. Well, the, the rioters that are out there, ironically, are not getting COVID. So I think the mask thing and the person-to-person uh, -person contact thing is really not a... That was part of the false flag that was two months ago. The uh, attempt to, to lock us all in our houses and turn us into scared little rabbits. That was the first phase. Yeah, that already was accomplished. Yeah, now we're in the, our ha house like scared rabbits waiting for the National Guard to come down our streets to arrest us all. Yeah, it's kind of moving rapidly, isn't it? In revisionist history, they are not telling the truth when it comes to that photo op stunt that they pulled at St. John's Church. First off, they claimed that protesters were throwing things. That's why they had to bump them back so forcibly, they said. Well, our CNN team was on the ground. Teens, I should say. We had many of them. They did not see any projectiles. Then. Uh, officials, officials from the administration, administration claimed that they, they did, did not, not use tear gas. gas. All right, well, they used pepper balls and smoke flashbangs, which caused these images that you're seeing right now. So, all right, if you want to split hairs there, it's a distinction without a difference, right? Pepper balls and flashbangs share many similar effects of tear gas, including excessive tearing, lacrimation, which CNN's team on the ground witnessed. They experienced this. You can see the folks here in front of you experiencing it. The president wants a correction from the media that tear gas was not used. But in fact, by his own CDC's classification, it was tear gas. The CDC notes the term tear gas is often used to describe different substances that are used for crowd control. Quote, Riot control agents, sometimes referred to as tear gas, are chemical compounds that temporarily make people unable to function, causing irritation to the eyes, mouth, throat. Okay, so apparently Esper said he didn't use tear gas, he used something like it. That's just ridiculous. I still believe that Esper was lying when he said that he didn't use tear gas. All right, I'd have to go there and get trace elements of the chemical on the fabric of the people that were being sprayed on to really know for sure, I guess. Uh, you know, CNN is not the worst network out there. Yeah, the fact is th there are there are networks that are, you know, even more sold into the new world order. CNN is basically doing whatever the leftists want. That's the problem with CNN. They don't seem to have a mind of their own. Buffalo police officers suspended after violently slowing him out of the ground. Wow. And now why did the police throw, uh, shove Joe Biden down? Wow. Okay. Sneaky tracer app and software. Good evening, you groovy people. Well, let's do a short, but very important. Um, Looks like a guy who likes to talk, so we'll watch him tonight. Thank you. And then this guy. Graphic. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. This is important, I guess. Graphic video. Buffalo police officers suspended after violently shoving man onto the ground. Back. 
That was terrible. They literally pushed this old man down really hard. Yeah, they might have killed him. He could have hurt his back with his head. That would tear it. Do you think the police will start acting like the ones in the UK, the more liberal, they will arrest us all for thought crimes? Yeah, I believe that that's coming, yeah. He's bleeding out of his ear. Wow, that's kind of weird. wonder why. Yeah, the police are terrible. Uh, in, in the UK, thought crimes are, uh, you're arrested for that. Racism. We created America so we wouldn't have to deal with this. And here we are dealing with it. And the problem is mostly that most of you have never really gotten involved politically. That's really the problem. You can blame all of us for not having formed a political union to stop these people. Many of you are so subdued by your, uh, your lifestyle, uh, your daily uh, porn, your, your cable news, your sports, you know, you barely have time to, you know, go to the bathroom and then eat junk food. So you really don't have time to build, build a political movement. And that's the reason why we don't get much support from you. And many of you are also fluoridated. You drink heavily fluoridated water in your soft drinks and your orange juices and your anything with added water. Yeah, so most of you are just become completely apathetic. And there's, there's more too. There's uh, viruses or there's vaccines or aerial vaccines being sprayed that subdue a, a gene in your mind that gives you the ability to think clearly. They studied rats, they figured out how to do it with humans too. It's called the VMAT2 gene. And the technology is available to create a vaccine and spray it aerially, aerially to drop in your air and you breathe it and automatically start feeling like, oh, I don't really care about anything, whatever. <laughs> It's kind of the ultimate zombie uh, vaccine. So you've got that going for you, which is nice. Lithium is sprayed in the air to make you feel numb and nothing is up or down for you. So I don't really blame a lot of you for being like cogs in the wheel, not being able to do anything outside of the wheel. I really don't. You don't even care about yourself, let alone the world or the future. I know. You're, you're growing so, why would I care about anyone else? Exactly. Good point, 211. So really, we're asking a lot to even get you involved in politics. We really are. But all you have to do is spread the word that this third party is censored and that I'm running for, for office and check out my Twitter feed or go to my website. That's all you really have to do to really spread the word. There's a certain momentum of word of mouth that's growing behind the scenes that the elitists can't control with what I've done. You see, 12 years ago, I predicted all this was going to happen, and I realized that I would be censored. That's why I went out of my way to create a video that would be very powerful with a blackface video. The word spread, and the world is still talking about what we're doing. We are heavily censored, though, on all the networks, and we've never had any representation in the mainstream media in 12 years. And I've noticed that all my uh, Twitter accounts and all my YouTube accounts are all locked down. I barely, er barely ever get hits, hardly any. Q is all wrong. Q has been a complete CIA construct from the beginning. October being stage three is, is predictable. Anybody can say that and say, yeah, I, October and November. You see, if, if they impose something in October, it'll affect the election. Now, if they affect the election and they shut down the ability of the mail to work, then I, I wouldn't even have a chance to be a write-in candidate, would I? So more than likely, that's not going to happen. I, I probably will get a write-in candidacy opportunity. Could be aliens, yeah. They could be coming up with the uh, Project Bluebeam, which is all about pretending there's aliens on Earth with holographic imagery. Sure. The technology to create a holographic image is very, very simple. But look at how the simple technology that they use to create this. All it took was this. That's all it took. Controlling a company called Acme Brick, which was acquired by Berkshire Hathaway run out of the same location Antifa is run out of. And they started a, a, what they claim is going to be some sort of a civil crisis. I don't think it's going to manifest into a full civil crisis. I don't. I, I think that they blew it once again. I think phase one was a failure. 
I think phase two is going to be a failure too. I don't think it's some weird alien experience. It's called really rich people wanting to get rid of poor people. They've been doing it for centuries. This is not some alien gathering. Okay, you got a short bus doing something. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Short, some short bus people doing this. Oh, are you talking about people jumping through windows? Take a look. This person breaks the window and she's like so happy, so she's gonna climb through the window. <laughs> She bashed her face against the, the machine across the way. She could have just pulled the door open. Yeah, the it door, wasn't, yeah. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't like it was locked. Yeah, it wasn't locked at all. It was like wide open. Well, I guess they're having fun. Their their first experience out of the uh, mental hospital. You know, when they released all these prisoners, Donald Trump did nothing to stop that. He didn't warn the governors at all, and say don't release them. He let it happen. In fact, he encouraged it to happen. Wow, no arrests for George Floyd from O2. Hmm. So we're going over the criminal history of George Floyd and there's no no arrests on his record yet he's got all these things on his rap sheet. Okay, and George Floyd uh, uh, now has a new brother and it's funny that George Floyd has a twin brother. He just, we just discovered it. He looks just like George Floyd. I'm serious. I'm really, I was shocked. I'm still kind of processing all that. Hmm. Okay, thanks for the links. I'll play that one. Hundreds of people were at a Black Lives Matter demonstration on Sunday in downtown Bryan, including Quincy Mason Floyd, one of George Floyd's sons. I mean, it's like my oldest. Everybody's coming out and showing them love. Like, this is beautiful. I, I love this. My heart is really touched by all this. Floyd and his sister Connie Mason moved from Houston to Bryan with their mother more than 15 years ago. Floyd said he was a young child when he last saw his father, and it wasn't until after Memorial Day when he learned of his dad's death while in police custody. Because I didn't recognize who it was until my mom told me, Colin told me, you know who that guy was? I said, no, she says it's your father. Floyd says people here in Bryan College Station have been surprised to learn about the local connection to this international story. He says some people even questioned it at first. No, they, they kept asking, like, how, oh, you have any proof about it? I said, yeah, I got proof. Look at my face and look at his face. And you, you'll tell. Both Floyd and his sister praised the local protesters for hosting peaceful demonstrations and denounced the violence that has unfolded in other cities. The violence is not the right way to do it. Now, this is beautiful. But the violence, it won't solve nothing. Ain't tearing up things, it's not going to solve anything. My dad is in peace, and we have to be the ones that, uh, that deal with all this stress. And it's going to be time to tough to get over this day by day. Okay, that's, thank you for that. Uh, so all these people are coming out of the woodwork that are his family members, because of course they've made what, 15 million on the GoFundMe page now? I think that's part of the deal. Yeah, something like 15 million I think he's up to. Uh, so we saw George Floyd's brother, his twin brother earlier. I don't know where it is at this point. I've got a lot of things in the lineup. I've got to secure it. And that's uh, a woman who doesn't want to make an issue out of the whole thing. Very outspoken. Piles of bricks around Toronto. This was seen. The bricks really are the big theme on the internet, yet nobody in the mainstream media is talking about how every city had all these bricks laying out for the rioters to grab. Every city. Here's Toronto. I mean, it didn't just hit America. It hit Toronto, too. Canada. So people have been buying bricks. Uh, Acme Brick Company is involved in this, according to a couple of experts looking into this. Police vehicles plowed into the protesters. Yeah, I saw that. And I'm just trying to bring up that one. This is 
his daughter, did you see that? Yeah. You saw it already on screen? Yeah. Okay, good. The daughter, uh, here he is, Stephen Jackson, the twin. Now, we didn't know George had a twin until now. You know, there was no, no reference to him until now. Here's Stephen Jackson, twin of George Floyd, speaking at a rally after but police officers charged with murder. Twin. Well, that's what they what said. What does that mean? I don't know. Former NBA player Stephen Jackson spoke at rally Friday afternoon. His friend, George Floyd, it doesn't say his twin. Hmm, but he looks just like him. Okay. Twin of George Floyd, handcuffed black man who died. I'm here because there's not going to demean the character of George Floyd, my twin. He says he's my twin. Jackson told reporters, a lot of times when police do things, they know what's wrong. First thing they try to do is cover it up and bring us, bring up their background to make them seem like the bulls. But they, they did what, but that they did was worthy when murder was ever worthy. But if it's a black man, it's approved. Okay, this is him. When was murder ever worthy? Yeah. 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 But if it's a black man, it's approved. You can't tell me when that man had his knee on my brother's neck, taking his life away with his hand in his pocket, that that smirk on his face didn't say I'm protected. You can't tell me that he didn't feel that it was his duty to murder my brother and that he was found and he was going to get away with it. Yeah, this looks a lot like him. I mean, I see how there, there's a resemblance, but I, I really have to get genetic uh, evidence to verify that that's his twin. You know, because, you know, you could say anybody's your twin. All right, Sarah's going to take over for a while. I'll be back. Thank you for those links. It's good stuff. You got a lot of stuff lined up for us this evening. Yeah, would that be a, a little bit convenient when he, he disappears and he comes out as his twin? All right. He was responsible for a riot at Detroit Pistons, Indiana Pacers basketball game. Wow. So he likes to incite violence. Yes, that's true, misanthropy. It's time for me to do that. But eight balls like only human. He's only human. He breathes when he falls down. Yeah, people don't all look alike, that's true. That was a pretty cool little emoji David put in with a, he put in a bird emoji over at D Live. That was cool. Uh, how are you all today? I am. I'm doing okay. It's very strange times. I feel like I live in. I may, people say may you live in strange times. Well, I do. I do live in strange times. Very strange times. I don't know if I like it. I don't really like it. There's certain things I like about it, but. Generally, overall, no, not really. Well, that too, sure, behavior. Soul child, you don't like face masks? I don't know. I think people accept me. I love fries. I accept people.
Ticken thinks most people look better with face masks. Do I look better with a face mask? With my hand over my face all the time? I don't know. I think it's hard because you can't see my cute little my dimples when I wear a face mask. Ah, I agree with you, Anita, except more people are driving around in cars than before. And there's so much more plastic pollution ever since this coronavirus. Uh, like the markers, they, they're not recycling markers anymore. There's um, still Pie War face mask before it was trendy. That was pretty interesting. There, um, there's so many like gloves you know, plastic gloves. It's just like, it's more polluting than not. If they think they, that this was a way to stop the pollution from the planet, mm, it's not working at all. They thought this was going to help with the climate change or something. It's not. Yeah. They're giving out free plastic grocery bags again. Exactly. You can't, you, you can't even bring your own bags into, into the market. They're like, well, I guess you could take the groceries car out to your car and you can bag it at your car if you want. Like, who's going to do that? Okay. I'm glad it works out for you. 211 likes wearing a mask. He thinks he looks better with, with, with a mask. Yeah, they're not allowed to touch your bags, but your no, I'm saying you can bag your own stuff at your car. Huh. I guess you're right, taking people who care about the environment would do it. I sometimes do it. I mean, everybody's now selling customized face masks. True. I still have the same N95 face mask that I had before all of this happened and I'm still using it. I did sterilize it, but it's just it's supposed to be, I guess, a one-time use thing and I've just reused it all the time at the co-op they charge for bags. Thank you. You have to go out and rush out next week. Why? Oh, you have your hospital operation. Got it. You do, misanthropy. I told you so. I told you. I told you. Why doesn't anybody ever listen to me? No, that sounds like David. Now everyone's getting into the sanitation business. Much like everyone was creating their own versions of wine and hot sauce, but now it's like Jim Bob's sanitation towelettes. <laughs> Brown is going to formally outlaw use of chokeholds by the Buffalo police. A man that was pushed to the ground by Buffalo police starts bleeding from his head. Wow. Two Buffalo police officers were suspended 
after a protester injured at Niagara Square demonstration. <laughs> exactly, chicken. Uh, they shoved an elderly man. He hit his head and he started bleeding. And so now they've been suspended. Murkowski backed Mattis, and so Trump is going to campaign against him. Against him. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. How dare you? About the sanitation wipes everybody's getting into. You don't think they like the way some cops were handling the COVID-19 scamdemic? So it's time for them to bring in the liberal types that will go along with whatever the media tells them. Rakowski backed Mattis, so Trump's going to campaign against her. Guy Benson says a disconnect is emerging between some elites and the majority of Americans. Your husband's not happy. Well, I think it's, I, it's nice that he's supporting you. Why would hubby be a ban? I don't understand Tiggin. Oh, here we go with liberals. I mean, I'm not a liberal, but it's interesting. It says civil rights groups, Black Lives Matter, sue the Trump administration over the protest violence. Oh, really? They don't have a waiting room for people who care? What are they supposed to... That's... Wow. Is that because of the coronavirus? Do they normally allow people? Has that always been the case? That looks pretty cool, misanthropy. Is that a music, something musical? It just sounds like a fluid synth. Oh, Swami project.
a real-time software synthesizer based on the SoundFont 2 specifications, which will reach widespread distribution. It does not have itself have a graphical inter user interface, but due to its powerful API, several applications utilize it, and it's even found its way into onto embedded systems and is used in some mobile apps. That's very cool. What is a CLI? Computer language interface? I don't know what CLLA stands for. I did, I did forget a lot of what you taught me. I can look it up. I'll go, I'll go look at my notes. It's like math, if you don't use it every day, you do tend to forget. You need to eat more vegetables and drink a lot more, a lot more water, how dare you. And eat some fiber while you're at it. Command line interface, thank you. I got, okay, in a, in a terminal. I do know what a terminal is. And you'll be happy, well, maybe not happy, but I am starting to get back into it a little bit. I looked at the Khan Academy. I'm looking at the Khan Academy um, computer science course. It starts with algorithms. I don't get it that often, Chili, Willie. Good to know. Uh, like, yeah, an enema, that might help. Well, and you need some, you need some vegetables in there too, not just greasy food and milkshakes. That's what I love about one of the things I do love that David does for me is he makes me a salad every day for lunch. Every day. And it's not just like a, I mean, there's a lot of effort that goes into his salads. One time you should just make a salad on Thursdays just to show you the work that goes into a salad. As long as it can flush. Potatoes do go well with ice cream. Um, I don't... I do like french fries dipped in ice, dipped in milkshakes. So weird, but that's true. Mm, I think they're stocking it back up, how dare you, so if you can afford more. You don't need to wrap it around your hands. Have I ever had Ruffles potato chips and ice cream? No, but that sounds delicious. No, not for me, Mr. Luscious Lion Ball. School is not over um, until June 19th. And thank goodness. They've uh, given me some paraeducators to help me clean my classroom because they're like, they want it super clean and they want everything labeled. They labeled all of my, my desk drawers. I'd organized my desk drawers and they labeled them all. 
and they labeled, oh man, this lady today, she must have spent like hours labeling all my stuff and my, and my labeling still not done. You're a female human. Okay. Eight ball. Good to know. All right, well, that's good, Digital Mall Rat. It really is. There's someone you love, you want to protect and honor him. That's good. I would. D d d d d d d uh, Sarah, what are your thoughts on public restrooms? a necessity for some people sometimes yeah it's something that most of the time you probably avoid it but if you need it you're glad it's there <laughs> oh interesting misanthropy A, a blackmailing bot. Getting paid in Bitcoin. Capitalist system and all that. Oh goodness. Uh, well, I grew up in a house with a lot of people, so yes, how dare you? I have, but not ever since I moved in with David. Thanks, old child. No, how dare you? No, I did not do that. Took a shower. You know, you're in the bathroom, there is a shower available. Oh, wait. Oh, someone's girlfriend kept using his socks? She must have really liked his socks, huh? He's like, buy your own socks. Oh, really? What? That's just crazy. You tell that sounds sad. Very sad video. I don't think I want it watch that yeah 
can't. What? That's just so weird. I'm sh did they break up? Hopefully. I'm sure they did. It's just weird. Weirdo. Okay, I guess I'm name calling, but. You often wonder if people realize how close we come to a shift in power during protest. Do you think there is a shift in power during protests? John Uncaged? Yeah, can you, ex like Newtail says, how so? Can you tell us more? How does that make you feel? But yeah, tell us more. How do you think we come to a shift in power? Is actor not uh, also a an AI? Ten thousand people versus one hundred people, isn't it obvious? Especially when they get those aerial views, you're like, whoa. Do you think like some people that they're going to try to devolve this into a war of some kind? I think he's, he's talking about the whole system as a power shift. Is that correct, John? Are you talking about the whole system? Yeah. Well, it's okay though. By asking you the questions, it makes you think deeper and be able to verbalize, which helps you later be able to verbalize it. I think that's where you, is that where you are right now? How, how dare you, you bring your phone in, in there and 
need to get some exercise that will help you. Gosh, chicken, I can't even believe you wrote that. Yeah, but most people don't talk about it like you do. How dare you or type about it. And how dare you, Nutel? We all suffer. I get it. But you had to put me in your comment, Ticken. Yes, I agree with you, John. True, take in, no problem. I'm ready for your, to take over for you. All right, Shelly, you, you and Enjoy making your moonshine. Oh, I'm going to check something there. I'm making some uh, grits out of that juice out of that. Oh, good. I grew up feeding grits, so. I grew up in the South eating grits. The coronavirus may be a blood vessel disease. Many of the infection's bizarre symptoms have one thing in common. In April, blood clots emerged as one of the many mysterious symptoms attributed to COVID-19. It would, had initially been thought to largely affect the lungs in the form of pneumonia. Then came reports of young people dying due to coronavirus related strokes. Then it was COVID toes, painful red or purple toes. What do all these symptoms have in common? An impairment in blood circulation. 40% of deaths from COVID-19 are related to cardiovascular complications. The disease starts to look like a vascular infection instead of a purely respiratory one. That's pretty interesting because like it's an RNA virus and HIV is an RNA virus and HIV is a 
vascular infection. Okay, good. I set it on the stove. There's a growing body of evidence to support the theory that the novel coronavirus can infect blood vessels. Yeah. Well, it, you know, the hemoglobin themselves have been broken apart and the hemoglobin, when they no longer carry the iron necessary to, to bond with the oxygen, they no longer become functional hemoglobin cells. Now this can happen two ways, a viral attack, I suppose, and another more likely way would be radiation Radiation can break up the hemoglobin in our lungs and make us not be able to breathe. So it could be, uh, you know, we may want to look at that. I wonder if that Dr. Liu in Pittsburgh at the University of Pennsylvania, I wonder if he was working on that, that simple fact of radiation affecting people's lung tissue from COVID victims. I wonder if he found that out, because if he did, that would be the reason why somebody would want to kill him, right? Oh. It would take us away from the whole vaccine thing. In the Lancet, they published wow. uh, Dr. Mandreet Murha. Ticking time bag says his roommate's boss has COVID, so he's been exposed secondhand. The virus can infect endothelial cells that line the inside of blood vessels. Exactly, just like radiation can do that too. Same exact effect. It's really a kind of a, the same symptomology. I wonder if that uh, is what Dr. Liu was working on. He was a top cellular biologist. It's not only respiratory illness, it's a respiratory illness to start with, but it's actually a vascular illness that that vascular one is what kills people through its involvement of the vasculature. Yeah, it's, they're seeing blood clots in lungs because of the vasculature problem. And it not, not only affects the veins, but arteries as well. So it, it, that's exactly what radiation would do too. So it's like wild. I was reading about it, and it, it seems to match the same uh, effects that uh, CAT scans can have on people. Overdose, you know, women who get radiation for uh, uh, after breast cancer treatments oftentimes get burns. It's the same kind of burn. Oh my God, you're getting a small. Now this could be like a, a reaction to the show too. You may be getting a psychosomatic reaction. You're starting to itch yourself, and even me doing this will make a lot of people itch. Corona also attacks the brain. Oh yeah, I met a lot of Corona people, infected brain people. Spraying the breathing centers in the brain. Oh, there you go. You can literally choke. It's not sending impulses to your lungs to work. That's radiation does that too, Nutel. It's kind of weird. Both Corona and radiation do the same things. Huh. Makes you wonder. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, I thought I'd make some Y2K grits. I've got one last container of our Y2K grits we got at Winco in 1998. Oh, good. So I'm doing very well. We've got a whole container full. But I'm finally down to that one container. Whoa. No, I would never hurt a 5G tower. I would I would simply move away from it. Yeah. I wouldn't live near a 5G tower. I don't care where you'd put it. I just move away. You know, it's called avoidance. Yeah, insulation is a nuisance fiber and it will make you itch. How dare you? What's a nuisance fiber? Uh, just fiberglass material. He's rolling around in his attic. He's wondering why he's itching. No, we're good. We're clean. Our room is running clean at Vaughn. So you like the mask because it covers the fact that you're ugly? That's a great thing. You know, those of you who are physically ugly are really benefiting from the mask, uh, masking your way. You know, it's a great way to meet people. You know, hi, I'm... I'm a mask person and, and you are too. We could hang out. Talk about your masks. It's a great point of conversation. Hi, are you a, a slave in the system and living under bondage with your mask on? Oh, so am I. <laughs> we have that in common. And you're talking through your mask. I'm not insinuating anything. 
Statins oh, John? Okay. and ACE inhibitors are linked to higher rates of survival. Yeah, ACE inhibitors. Statins wow. reduce the risks of heart attack, not only by lowering cholesterol or preventing flat plaque, they also stabilize existing plaque, meaning they're less likely to rupture if someone's on the drugs. So they recommend statins. statins? And it turns out that both statins and ACE inhibitors are extremely protect protective on vascular dysfunction. Yeah. Most of their benefits in the continuum of cardiovascu cardiovascular illness. This is a really good article. Good. And so basically, Let's there's I've, said, I've learned a couple of things with this. Mm -hmm. uh, one is that, so they have SARS-1, which was the old SARS, and then the COVID is SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. And SARS, the original SARS, needed a particular protein to um, replicate. And that particular protein is only found in lung tissue. With COVID, it needs a different protein to replicate. And that different protein is called ferrin. And it's actually in every single cell in our body. But particularly, and that this this was pretty, this was a very interesting article. You know, and a lot of uh, homeopathic meth methods like zinc combined with oxy hydroxychloroquine actually do the same exact thing to the cells. They, they create shields, preventing the cells, from, uh, the cells breaking up. It's the hemoglobin cells that are breaking up, causing the oxygen to not bind with the iron. Yeah. Our, 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 normally our lungs have iron in the blood. And the iron connects to the oxygen really well. And that's what transports the oxygen into every, our body. Every blood cell is, is a center, is an iron. Yeah, and every blood cell needs protection too. So if it's statins or uh, some methodology in pharmaceuticals, sure. But nothing injectable. That's my point. Thank you, Sarah. Very good. Avoid injectables. Anthrax protests and survive live, really, from 2011. Anthrax, it's come to this. We have to go watch Anthrax. Well, that's the thing, Chili. If you if you, if you pat yourself and you're all chilly, and it'll it'll get your blood circulating. So, give yourself a pat on the back. That'll help you circulate your blood. One of the things you want to do in, the, in when you wake up in the morning because your blood pools when you're sleeping is slowly wake up yeah and wiggle your extremities yeah and get your hands going like that slowly wake up they say that more people die of strokes in the morning when they wake up because their body is just you know it's like jumping out of the sleep and it, it sometimes it, it's the wrong wrong method and it can backfire mm-hmm I wonder about 5G EMF protection clothing. I don't like the things that you wear over your head. So I'm developing something different for uh, Sarah for when she goes back to school. It's not like a tinfoil cap or anything like that. But it will provide some 5G pr protection as well. You know, I'm thinking we'll have to retrofit all of the people that go to school in like big Depends underwears made out of Mylar. Like Mylar Depends. Because a lot of your vital organs that require replication, the gonads of, of the man and the, the ovaries of the woman, these are very susceptible to 5G EMF pen, uh, penetration. And not only your children, but your children's children will be born cretin or mutant because of it. So why are we letting the 5G be installed without any questions? Because we are, allowing the Democrats and Republicans to run the entire operation. We don't seem to have enough ability to actually form a party. Yeah. So we can't address these issues like RFID, and genetically modified organisms in our food, diet, in our bloodstream, pesticides, that terrible use of pesticides, overuse, Roundup, herbicides, unsafe, 
And why are there no t safety tests done on any of these things? And why do the Democrats, Republicans not care? Because they're asleep and they're never going to care about anything like this. They're never going to represent us. They've been simply taking money and pretending like they care. Your wife met her third boyfriend at the protests. Oh, so you're putting up with a woman who's cheating on you like the third time? Are you serious, dude? Tell me that's not happening. No wonder you don't care about yourself. Poor guy. Your wife's cheating on you three times now? Oh, man, you must be living in hell. Jesus. Carl. Okay, a college humor. That's right. Let's arm what? No, let's not. Back in the 60s, early 70s, they had a National Lampoon article that said the key to a successful uh, magazine is you put a, a dog, a revolver, and apple pie on the cover of the magazine. And they proceeded to do that. I'd show you the cover, but I'm, I'm probably going to... Let me see if it pops up. Mm. Hugely popular comedy series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they said that you put a, forget the apple pie, you put a dog and a revolver on the screen and, and they published it. And that's what, that's, that's what got people to buy magazines. And this, I'm kind of using this as an example or an analogy of what we're dealing with with the media. They want to see riots. They love it. They, their, their ratings go up. They want to see this stuff. So they foment this hatred and they call it racial tension. They call it Antifa, uh, BLM. And they're doing the bidding of the people that are actually trying to create racial hostility. And the media loves it. They eat it up. And this is why we as viewers have to start segregating from our media, developing your own media in your own mind where you sort through the facts. A message from the NRA. Okay, we're going to take a look at the NRA. We obey, and we will defend the right to bear arms by any means necessary. We will not be docile for our oppressors. Right. That's that's right. Yeah. I'm sorry, you're with the NRA? Yeah. Somehow I don't believe this is from the NRA. Y'all pulling something in my room here. I don't believe it. It's an NRA official stamp on this uh, here commercial. That's six minutes going on there. Hey, let's just tell you what's going on. You could do that. Sure. I don't have that going on anymore. I've got a different room in there. I've got this. Yeah, this is government-sponsored civil unrest to take away our rights. That's what this is. And we've got the Acme Brick Company. They're using the left, the, the left that Don, Barack Obama groomed to trigger this civil unrest in our country right now. And the government is, is definitely behind it with the bricks being positioned in all the cities and the, the willful suppression of that information on the mainstream media. Not one news story is talking about the bricks that were placed in America across the country. So we are in the middle of a live exercise conducted by the Democrats, Republicans to break up our country. They've been hijacked to, and used to create this hostility and friction and divide our nation. So you come on back to America's third party and you can hang out with, you know, cool Dave and Sarah and, and not get all freaked out about everything. Wouldn't that be nice? It's so a national attention span test. How did we do? Uh, you're pushing one and a half uh, minutes, actually. GOP senators are uh, upset at Trump. Oh, yeah. He's been gas bagging him. Yesterday, my colleague Casey Hunt asked a whole bunch of members of the GOP lawmakers about what happened in D.C. on Monday night. And I just want to share that with you. What the president did 
the peaceful protesters that were dispersed with tear gas, he then walked across the street to the church. Was that the right thing to do? Senator, was what the president did yesterday at St. John's, was that appropriate? Was it an abuse of power? Senator, nice to see you. Was what the president did last night right? But those weren't the only responses from GOP senators. Senator, any comment on the president gassing peaceful protesters for a photo op? Uh, sorry, bad reception. We're not on the phone. I'm going into a tunnel. I can still see you. <laughs> Senator, any comment on the tear gassing? Uh, me no habla the... Wh what's the Spanish word for English? What did you think of the president's actions? I enjoy violence against the innocent. Gets me off. <laughs> Senator McConnell, was the president's behavior appropriate? <laughs> That's very funny. I'm glad that The Late Show is doing some uh, tongue-in-cheek stuff. But you know, The Late Show works for the Illuminati and the New World Order, just like uh, the Republican Party does. They're both dividing the country. They're constantly working to separate us. Uh, I, I feel like I need to go into the technology uh, level because uh, we need to escape this with a little bit of new technology. But all, my, all I'm pulling up is bricks. Yeah, I got bricks here, bricks there, bricks in San Francisco, bricks in Baltimore. Ah, it's bricks everywhere. This was under an underpass in San Francisco, bricks. That's the only technology we can talk about tonight. How about the Tesla internet? Uh, I don't know if there is one. There's talk of a new internet, but it's just talk. That was kind of funny. <laughs> The FBI finds no intel indicating Antifa involvement. Ah, <laughs> what a lie. What a total lie. See, this is another cover-up. You can't trust the FBI either. They're working for the mob. And they've been covering up for pedophiles. We all know that the recent uh, attempt by the Republicans to expose the FBI has been pretty much minimal. You could even get uh, McCabe to get you know, his retirement account taken away. I think they're going to give him his retirement funds. Look at that, it's Baltimore. So they're sitting out right outside the windows of some business. All these different things waiting to be used against people. So this is just a crock of crap is what this is. And coming out of the nation, a, a look. A liberal rag sheet, no less. A mouthpiece for George Soros and a liberal rag sheet pushing a, a BS story that the FBI finds no intel indicating Antifa's involvement in Sunday's violence. What a crock of crap. We have Antifa on screen in black ninja outfits running around. We've got the bill of ladings. Every one of them is, was carrying like a, a thing to, to tell them what to do, how to properly act. We know they're getting paid by George Soros. My God. Talk about a liberal rag sheet. Nation is a joke, man. Why you need to try a high-tech Japanese toilet? Now you're talking technology. Thank you. We can do that. I'm using Sarah's room for the technology thing here. There's what comes to mind after you use Japan's high-tech toilets. Luxury. The experience. The convenience. Okay, I want to do that. I just don't want to pay monetization fees on the company. So I will add it to uh, you know the bidet factor. I will add it to our list tonight, for sure. Okay, I'm going to move into the other room. This is my beautiful room here.
I rarely get to play my Mr. Right song during the show, so thank you. I won't play it at the end. That'll be better. Uh, I'll, all I can say is I needed to get out of that room, and I did build a new room and get things back on track. Uh, we got technology like an ocean pipeline project that we want to do. It would be very beneficial for our world. We could create fresh water. The ocean pipeline project actually could veritably save the day for a lot of us. Uh, we've got hybrid technology. The shirt I wore last night and yesterday at Black We've got, uh, yeah. The idea of building a better planet, all that. Pricing up plastic, that was a big part of this room at one time. More paper sacks, remember we talked about that? Yeah, the old days, remember the, the old days? And then the drones came. The container fence, yeah, we had that, that was the uh yeah so apparently this room had a lot of uh, damage to it i had no chemtrails i had once wanted to talk about yeah remember that oh filtering water yeah i even talked about a new america at one point remember that before all this happened yeah well i'm still talking about a new america actually so that's kind of on point we'll talk about that then all right i'm just trying to get everything together Pricing up plastic would be very beneficial for our society because we wouldn't have to have a lot of plastic waste. Filtering the water we, we drink and the air we, we breathe, and obviously ending chemtrails is a big part of what we need to do. What do you got, Petoro? World's largest all electric aircraft makes a maiden flight. That looks like fun. Yeah. Running on all electricity. Must have solar panels on it. It's a battery operated. Somehow I'm not excited. I'm not seeing anything new other than, you know, electric engine. No solar panels. So how is it going to regenerate the energy? Uh, that's nice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's got batteries in it. Click on chat room's link. It's an inter interesting article. Okay. Watch looters use forklifts to break into California store in broad daylight. Whoa. Okay, here we go. This is good. This is a new America. So maybe this is a good place. The black background, kind of a hardcore black and white thing. Look at that. I'm afraid I have to mute this because they're gonna the rap singers will monetize me <laughs> look at that man that's that's wild look at this just going right into the entire store just boom 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 Yep, taking it down. Sure, why not? Yeah, whatever they can do. Huh? Just doing their part. Wow. We're back to anthrax. Okay, let me respond to chat. I think it'd be better if I spent my time doing that. Yeah, well, my big thing about technology is we should be moving in a green, clean way. And when I say no chemtrails, I really mean it. You see, part of our problem is we've been dumped on for years, and who knows what's in the air. It could even be uh, affecting our brain, whatever's left of it. Well, the fact is, Final Dream, they're all letting them out. All those DC looters have been released already. Same with St. Louis. Well, whatever is next, hopefully, is a, a calm society. I mean, if we just impeach Donald Trump, we'd be fine. 
A famous economist thinks that stimulating the economy will will occur with the riots. That's pretty funny. Tragedy is real. What's that? Oh, you need to dump the whole thing. Yeah, what's the problem? Where should I do it? Do have a preference? Well, just the, the ferns. That's where they go. Oh, okay. We, I just toss it there. The ferns love it. Oh, you know, this guy is the famous economist guy. He thinks he's a famous economist. Okay. Or he, he's referencing one. I see. Well, let's see what the Dow Jones did yesterday or today. Dow Jones. It seems to be doing very well. Up 11 points. Big day on the Dow, yeah. Lots of, uh, stay tuned. Okay, you gotta leave, you gotta go to bed again. Okay, in in between nappy nappies. Okay, DT, thank you. 26, yeah, up 11.93. Nothing, uh, nothing like a, a positive attitude toward a failing economy suffering but oftentimes it will allow people to become more united and rally together for a cause malevolence on the other hand is a different story and it oftentimes breaks souls and destroys nations now okay we'll find out more about this tonight in our lineup yeah he's talking about paul Kruseman, the nobel prize guy yeah i don't mind listening to that that line of thinking I do believe it's going to cause a lot of food shortages when rioters take down all of your food and your cigarette shipments and everything. Yeah, I think that'll affect the economy, don't you? <laughs> a famous economy uh, economist has said that the economy will actually pick up when the when the entire world collapses. <laughs> I believe that. Not. Oh, we got another yeah i heard about these releases i think they're do dropping some sort of a germ warfare on the skies above us yeah it's like a massive uh, elon musk flying sperm load shooting through the la sky this was in 2017 yeah many people believe this was like a the initial precursor of the germ warfare that we're experiencing right now i never trusted this i don't think these are uh, mini satellites did you hear that uh, Elon Musk is actually trying to put together a, a 60 satellite deployment this week? He's going to try to get 60 satellites out there into the atmosphere. They're really trying to ramp up the points of light, uh, the 5G network they want to put up there. They're, they're, they're amplifying the 5G network's abilities, which will be a point of, sh I guess it's called pencil beam technology, where they can dial in on anybody and kill them within a second. Wow, what, what will they think of next, you know? Who would ever thought that the 5G network would turn into a microwave weapon? <laughs> well, I did, and I warned you. Yeah, not only myself, but Barry Trower, uh, the world famous expert on microwave weapons, said that 5G started in the 70s. Pencil beam technology can pinpoint anybody in an open area and take them out. Bzz. And you know, the weird, weird thing is, the symptoms are you can't breathe, and then you die. Wow, doesn't that sound familiar? Hey, D-Live, what's going on, man? We got the gang over there. You know, I've always wondered why uh, the rioters are not concerned about COVID-19. Because they have this attitude of, you know, they're going to die anyway. They could be popped tomorrow by their uh, their next door neighbor. It's that, that mindset that you live in the hood, you could be taken out at any minute. So they're always living on the edge. They don't care if they, to them, it makes them stronger. And that's how the, the mentality of a lot of people in third world nations too. So ironically, COVID-19 might have the opposite result. It might build our immunity and make us stronger and more, you know, street savvy. Jobs are not coming back, okay, unless we create them. These would create jobs. This would eliminate a job of chemtrails. A thousand points of light. A new world odor. No quid pro quo. George H.W. Bush. 
And look at this thing, this monstrosity that Elon Musk, who never says bad things about the 5G network, by the way. You would never get him to say, oh, you think we might want to test it to see if it's safe for humans? No, Elon Musk would never say that. There it is. Captain El Paso del tren de sesti satellite de de Olimomosco para Brasil. Look at that. Isn't it amazing? So he's going to put these things out there tethered to each other with piano wire. David, hard of hearing, say face masks, uh, cut off communication. I agree. You can't even sign with a face mask on because, you know, signing sometimes requires you to move your lips. Especially if you read lips and sign. The Bay Area deaf or hard of hearing say face masks could cut off communication. I totally agree. And there's no proof face masks stop the virus for all, for all we know. Yeah. But this guy is making a good point for people with uh, disabilities and hearing, hearing impairment. Clark, Clark Brook signed the, world, the word fast in American Sign Language while sh shaping his lips to indicate very fast. Then he put on a cloth face mask and made the same sign. Now you're losing their facial expression, right? The mouth emphasis. Yeah, they use the mouth emphasis to like, uh, you know, add an, another twist to the communication. So yeah, they can't communicate without, with a mask on rather. Hello darkness, my old friend. Well, this is another vision of the Starlink across the sky. Starry, starry night, paint your palette blue and gray, start out on another day. Isn't it amazing? I just don't trust Elon Musk because he doesn't say anything negative about the 5G network. Hey, we haven't tested it for safety, so there's no reason why we would give it a, a, a banner of approval. As far as what they're doing with the 5G deployment with the satellites, this is absolutely nuts. We don't have any clue as to how serious this is. You know when the dark fiber goes in? We only know about, out of a, out of a cable like this, only about this much we know about. All that other part of the cable is completely uh, unknown dark fiber. We don't know what they're going to use it for. You got to wonder if there's some big plan here to use the dark fiber to electrocute the human population, thereby eliminating humans completely from the face of the earth. You know, if AI had a big goal, they'd completely develop a plan to completely devastate the human race quickly and efficiently. And what better way than to create a neural network around the entire globe and electrocute the entire population? Why, that's the, it's still going. Look at that. It just keeps going and going, man. Jeez, it's a lot. I bet they're going to they're gonna try to build this around the entire uh, Earth, I think. This is the beginning of some sort of a Skylab. This is just satellites that are connected by lasers. Okay. I can believe you, but I tend to believe that they're... If they are connected by lasers, th there's got to be some wire in between them. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd see them fall out of order just from mere faulty devices breaking down. Police hunt Madeleine McCain suspect. No, underage Kosovoan. Ex I don't believe it. No. No, 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 no. I don't believe, you know, that whole story is trying to get our minds off of the John Podesta and Tony Podesta. They found some some idiot that would, would stand for uh, justice I don't believe it. I think the Madeleine McCann story is just a throwaway. It's like a rag sheet to try to get us off the, the hook of Tony Podesta and John Podesta. Detectives believe Christian Bruckner's uh, ex-girlfriend will help an investigation. They hope she has details about the 43-year-old movements in Praz de Luz. The pair stayed in the farmhouse 25 minutes walk from the McCann's resort. She's reported to have left before Maddie went missing while Bruckner stayed. The prime suspect of the Madame McCain suspect is now moving. I just don't know, you know, I just, we still have adequate 
stories from people claiming that three people were involved, Ghislaine Maxwell, Tony Podesta, and John Podesta, allegedly. I think we have to look at that, too. That has not been looked at by our FBI. You know, the same people that decided that Antifa had nothing to do with the riots this past Sunday. Ha! Huh, what a joke. So that's a throwaway story. That's some, something they're generating just to keep their, our minds active. Yeah, I'm just not that impressed by the Stargate. I consider it very, the Starlink satellite thing to be very suspicious, actually. Everything Elon Musk does, I consider pretty suspicious. De Blasio's loss of control. De Blasio drowned out by booze, calls to resign at the George Floyd Memorial. Wow. De Blasio's hated big time in New York, especially for breaking up a Hasidic Jewish gathering, I believe it was a wedding or something, or a funeral, but not breaking up anything else. Calls to resign, look at that. Let us welcome, with respect, the mayor of New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio. Again, 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 we say respect. We say respect. 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 I would like to offer congratulations to the Floyd family for earning what $14 million on your GoFundMe page. I wonder who your big donors were, the Masons? Yeah, maybe the, the uh, local Masonic uh, club in, in your area. I wouldn't doubt the Minneapolis Masons gave uh, the Floyd family quite a bit of money. But we'll never know. The GoFundMe is pretty much a secret place to get money. Yeah, so I kind of like this harsh background. It's kind of fun. I was looking for something uh, different, but I think this is different. I like it. It feels good. Absolutely. Well, I think we have to talk about that, whatever it is. We've got Joe Biden reaching down and fawning over a guy from Mad TV now. But Joe, this is getting ridiculous. Ah, look at this. Ah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't. My mother will tell. This guy was so funny. I don't know what happened to his career, but some of the funniest stuff in the world was uh, going on during that time period on Bad TV. I wonder what he did when he left the show. You know, everybody wants to know, but. Uh, Nobody really wants to ask, hey, Dave, were you ever involved in comedy? <laughs> no, no, never. I was not on Mad TV. That guy's very funny, though. I like him. <laughs> yeah, you think I look like Jim Carrey, I know. We could talk about that all night long. You found a, new, a fluid synthesizer. Wow. Huh. Sounds interesting. Score reading, fluid synthesizer, okay. I don't know, I'm not really into synthesizers. Simple is good for me. You wanna watch Meghan Markle? She's the Illuminati messenger. Uh, now that they've got her under their thumb, she delivers messages like Tom Hanks does to uh, graduating classes of 2020 that can't gather because of social distancing. But they can play Meghan's uh, video on their, on their private internet connection has been absolutely devastating. Um, and I wasn't sure what I could say to you. 
I wanted to say the right thing and I was really nervous that I I wouldn't or that it would get picked apart and I realized the only wrong thing to say is to say nothing. Okay, I better say something then. Okay, I feel like I'm saying something wrong right now but not saying anything. Well, I'm glad we got that inside look at uh, at Joe Biden's personal fetish for uh, Mad TV guys. Leonardo DiCaprio pledges to end the disenfranchisement of Black America. See, that's what I mean. I mean, what's this deal with uh, with all these Zionists like Leonardo defending the Blacks? Is it they got tired of defending the Jewish people? I mean, what's going on? I mean, first they defended all the Jewish people in Hollywood, which is practically everybody, and then then they. Then they now they talk about defending blacks, which is blacks have had a big lift over the years. I mean, with affirmative action, I don't get it. You know, I I respect that black woman that said BLM doesn't even represent black people anymore. Yeah, that's what she said. Black woman said that. Okay, uh, life in Minneapolis. Uh, let me open my business. Dangerous lunatic or righteous protester Carl's TV broken into uh... Wow that says a lot <laughs> he's a dangerous lunatic standing there trying to just open his business wearing a mask doing all the things he's supposed to and then some guy comes in and CNN looks at him as like oh he's a righteous protester Teen Vogue put an ad out recently it's, it tells you the mindset of the leftist media. It's just beyond belief, in fact. Let me take a look here. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll show it to you. Zero Hedge covered it. Teen Vogue tells its readers Antifa aspires toward creating a better world. Teen Vogue is telling young people right now, it's, it's aspiring, the Antifa people are aspiring toward a creating a better world. So it's, it's perfectly normal for people to break windows and businesses and get away with it, get released from jail and go out and do it again. Unbelievable. Teen Vogue, here it is. Antifa grows out of a larger revolutionary politics that aspires toward creating a better world. But the primary motivation is to stop racists from organizing. How do you know these people who Antifa are not racist? It's, they seem racist. The racist against white people. I mean, really. I mean, since when does Teen Vogue try to manipulate young people's minds like that, and make them think Antifa is a good thing? Ma in a Floyd. Well, the George Floyd Fund is now up to twelve thousand, twelve million nine hundred twenty-eight. So roughly thirteen million dollars, give or take a few thou. I right, thirteen million. That's not bad. But George did real well with the family. I bet you Joe's is going to be visiting everybody in the Bahamas. He's got a, a plush room all set up. Everybody in the family gets to go to the Bahamas to visit Mr. Floyd. He could be alive. We don't know. We have a, we have a lot of people who think that this guy, whole thing was set up. There were multiple camera angles of this entire event. It was almost like a stage production. The more you look at it, the more you think, gee, is this what's happening? They're really trying to create a race war? I guess Charles Manson was right after all, right? Yeah. Helter Skelter and yeah, I think I, I almost think that he was, uh, you know, perhaps he was working for the government back then. That's a theory. Maybe they've been trying to create a race war since they funded it, Charles Manson and his and the girls. Yeah, who knows? This was 1969, the year that Charles Manson killed the Tate and the LaBianca family. Yeah. This is today's 2020 world, where two gay guys are hanging out on their, their scooter. Is that one of your rentals, Trump Tartican? I know you have a bunch of rentals uh, you bought. He invested in, in rental scooters, and he was upset that he a couple of them were burned up in the riots recently. That's the U.S. scooter, Easy Rider. Well, I don't call it, that's not Easy Rider. That's like uh, Down Low Rider. Yeah. Like everything they do is on the down low. 
do, 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 do. You know, I met Dennis Hopper. I had a great conversation with him before he died, of course. Well, it's kind of hard to talk to people after they die. Unless, of course, you can channel them psychically through multiple dimensions, which I can help you with. But no, seriously, Dennis Hopper was one of the most down-to-the-earth guys I think I've ever talked to. Jack Nicholson. Now, no, that was Jack. No, I think it was Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper, if I'm not mistaken. No, I didn't kill him. He died of prostate cancer. But I had a great conversation with him, uh, about 20, 20 minutes, roughly. And uh, I guess the one thing we talked about the most was how completely, utterly f absurd the world is. How, how completely, uh, it's not what you think it is. Yeah, I think a lot of people in Hollywood become a little disillusioned over time. It, the world is not like Hollywood, in case you didn't know. And neither it was his life. I mean, you know, he got into a, a lawsuit with his wife before he died. And then he took his entire Andy Warhol collection and and uh, gave it to his daughter. Uh, millions and millions of dollars of Andy Warhol paintings. His estate wasn't worth that much, but his Andy Warhol collection was. David, I got you turned down all the way down and you're still as loud as... Well, that's because I'm a loud guy. Let me drop my volume just a little bit. Thank you. You like it? All right, well, I'll drop you. How about that? That's a little bit better. I toned it down a little bit. Yeah, Andy Warhol, the gay guy that hung out, uh, you know, John Lennon. I'm not gay, so I don't have any pride to talk about. And I'm not running around trying to be prideful of my heterosexuality. But you gay guys obviously are. Really, you have to mute me because you have neighbors? Well, I'm sorry. Well, some people just don't know, know what good hair is. If I had hair like Trump, I probably, uh, I probably wouldn't want to be president. You better, I can hear you better now. Okay, great. Well, I'm not even using my, my big mic. I'll be bringing that out in 2021. Yeah, I plan on syndicating everything. The whole thing will be syndicated eventually. It'll be kind of like the serious radio thing with Howard Stern, except I'll do it on the free network that I'm creating. Yeah, I don't think people should pay for anything. I really believe that it's time to just get, get free stuff for all of us. I think the looters are, are behind that. They want it on some of the cr crazy, ridiculous freebies that Nancy Pelosi and Moscow Mitch and Lindsey Graham are getting. Yeah, I think all the looters just want a little piece of something. They didn't get the stimulus check. Most of those people that were out there uh, taking money from George Soros, uh, bashing in windows, they didn't get a stimulus check. That's one of the reasons why they rioted. You did, but they didn't. I didn't. I'm not pissed, though, because I didn't want that dirty money. Do we have to keep playing that? That's not my son, and I don't care what he says. It's just so mindless. It's like, do you ever care about it? It's like, no one cares about what that guy says. He may make money on, on AdSense dollars, but he's like, who cares? Anyways, if my life was all about just sitting there getting money for AdSense, I don't even know why I would, you know, even do a show. I wouldn't even do a show if, I, if it was all about making money. This is not about money at all. It never was. This is about trying to figure out what's happening underneath the uh, the scrim of BS the mainstream media puts together. When they have a memorial fund that de generates $13 million for a family that uh, all of a sudden they got brothers popping out of nowhere. This guy on the right was crying so much he, he didn't draw a tear. He just kept wiping his eyes for about 10 minutes. And there was no tear on his face. So the other brother, it looks like he's got his eyes going in different directions. And she did an entire interview with a smile on her face. The cousin, what was it, Sharonda? Not even think they, they don't even name her fa her name there. It's just her face. Yeah, she was smiling like she was happy. It was weird. It was like, are these people really suffering loss? Because it doesn't seem like it. I don't get that empathetic feeling. 
You got that empathetic feeling. Yeah. I'm trying to hype everybody. You know, I don't I'm the only guy out there talking about chemtrails in a negative way. Everyone else calls it like some wacky idea. No, we really are being sprayed. There's no doubt about it. Our whole life has been completely changed because of it too over the years. It's been bad. There's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of uh, loss because of it. America has a twenty five trillion dollar debt. It shortly is going to go over twenty five. Uh, it's going to go to once the stimulus finally spends out, it'll probably go to twenty seven trillion, and then they'll have three trillion left. Now, if Nancy Pelosi puts together another three trillion dollar spending stimulus bill. We'll be out $30 trillion. We will never be able to meet the minimum payment on that. White Rabbit, let's take a look. Breaking, breaking. Riots break out in Mexico. Police set on fire. This should be, these, these should be peaceful protests, but not riots. Let's take a look. No le gusta. No, that's pretty bad. Very bad Mexico situation. Uh, Policia el, el, el fiero. I, 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 esta... A que tragedia. Could I, que tragedia? Okay. Um, La policía está en la mas. The police are on fire. Okay, anything else uh, to talk about? What? Well, what do you mean? What's going on? It's called ex exacerbate. It's called blowing everything out of proportion. The media loves it. They they eat this up. They want us to freak out all the time. That's why they do it. We just saw guys using a neck hold, even though they're not supposed to, on a black person, even though they're not supposed to, just to freak people out. This is going on, to, this is happening today, even after George Floyd. Over 1074. One out of 12. 10 4, all units 10 3 there. 10 there. So using a neck hold the same way. And this is not supposed to be happening. You'd think police departments would issue a memorandum saying, "We should, hey guys, don't do that, you know? No, there's no leadership. Donald Trump is just providing no leadership to any of the people in any of the precincts across the country. Uh, we got a really good one from uh, James O'Keefe and Veritas. They'll be infiltrating the Antifa group tonight. We'll be talking about that at the 10 o'clock hour. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to find out about what's going on in the inside and where they're getting money? 
When the FBI says Antifa didn't have anything to do with Sunday's activity, you got to wonder. And we do have a video uh, rolling out right now at 153. I pieced together all the footage. I pieced together all the footage I have from our uh, recent videos. We crunch a lot of videos here. And uh, because I can't seem to get enough of it, we got it right here for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm pushing nearly 500 views in the past 15 hours, 16 hours, so that's good. Uh, it's called... It's called government-sponsored civil unrest. Now we pulled all these videos together of all the bricks around the country along with all the, the agent provocateurs. If you want to see the video, here it is. Government sponsored civil unrest. Yeah, it's it's just a, a detail of of all the things that have happened and we've got all kinds of video proof. Good evening, Anderson Cooper. Welcome. Yeah, go ahead and run that on uh, the evening news. That'll shock a few people. Ah, uh, yeah, they were just beating a woman with a billy club. Oh yeah, of course. Well, it's really police brutality we have to deal with right now. The big thing is uh, the media and the leftists want to turn this into a, a, a racial thing. It's not. Trump has not addressed brutality whatsoever. Had he just made a statement saying, oh, we're going to do everything we can so that this terrible tragedy never happens again. But he, everything he says is more like he's endorsing Antifa or he's criticizing Antifa. We don't know what he's doing. Trump is all over the place. Whoa. Whoa. Beating a woman with billy clubs. Look at this. Can you believe this? Look at this behavior. Oh my God. Okay, we'll bring the audio in in a second. That's just crazy, man. Mayor Browser is kicking the Utah National Guard out of DC hotels tomorrow. More than 1,200 troops from 10 states are being evicted. But you're not allowed to. Uh, I believe uh, our Third Amendment requires him to quarter troops. <laughs> yeah, that's assuming Trump is truly violating the Constitution. He, only, he can only do that if he has a martial law scenario. Okay, we got a video over here. Oh, you got a, a guy with a Ford F-250. Uh, he's got a block, a big block Ford F-250 he's going to try to revive after 11 years. Well, I got ahead of these people. I mean, I got a mower I don't even want to get my, my myself into and, and restart. I'd rather just, you know, give it to somebody. 712 times. When's a guy going to do another Ford pick -em up truck? And likewise, when am I going to do another big block? Wow. Okay. Ford F-250 big block. All right. I'll add that. Yeah. You never know. Back to this woman. Terrible situation. Let's go live. Okay, they're beating up women in order to piss people off. That's what they're doing. Well, I, I would donate my, I did, I would donate my lawnmower, but it's too nice of a lawnmower. So she was asking for it. Come on, Anderson, you can't really be Anderson Cooper. He would never say that. 
what is going on is it's a government takeover of our rights using martial law. The U.S. government and George Soros and the Acme Brick Company are responsible for the seeding of these riots. It's that simple. It's not that complicated. And they're trying to do it to create a police state that will permanently remove you from having rights and turn you into a, a slave. This poor man was standing in the way. Look at this. And he was knocked down and he started bleeding when he landed on his ground. Look at this. Terrible. He's bleeding out of his ear. You know, that's not a good sign. Bleeding out of your ear on a fall like that means you're getting a, having an embolism from the land of the, of the crash. They took an old man and just knocked him down. Can you believe this? So what this is, all of this violence that we're playing, and here we are acting like we're giving you news, we're only pissing people off. And that's why I really don't like being a venue for a lot of violent videos like this. It's just designed to, to create more and more pissed off people. It's very sad, yeah. I mean, a lot of your, your emotions are, are carried deep into this. Many of you are seeing these cops mistreat people. The real issue is brutality. So welcome to the show if you're looking to stop brutality. But beyond that, it's just, let's face it. You've got so many people now that have been uh, absolute it's unbelievable absolute violent police officers should have been pulled off the force years ago Amy Klobuchar could have easily gotten this guy Chauvin off of the uh, police force I am really beginning to believe that Chauvin wasn't even working as an active duty cop when this happened I'm beginning to wonder if this wasn't like a play production that they just deputized everybody because they liked the way it looked the thing that got me is Chauvin and the uh, younger man or the uh, Asian man are related. Chauvin's wife is the the sister of that short Asian man. Yeah. Let me see if I have that clip here. Yeah, this guy right here is the uh, the brother of the wife of of Derek Chauvin, Kelly Chauvin. How, how come his brother is in the force? There's 500,000 people in Minneapolis. How can these two be so close and have this, you know, this looks like a team operation. Well, maybe he is a chauvinist of sorts, but the, the fact of the matter is he's on suicide watch now, Chauvin is, because his wife is divorcing him. And these charges of uh, second degree murder are being let, uh, put on him. There's no explanation other than, well, there's two explanations. He really did kill George Floyd. That's a terrible tragedy. Or this is an elaborate uh, elaborate attempt to create extreme anger in America and start some sort of a, a civil crisis, like a civil war. This has all the earmarks of both of those possibilities. And if it's one of the, if it's the latter, and we are truly being led down a, a primrose pathway to destruction. Yeah, I'll, I'll, that's all roads lead to Jericho. But no, there, there is a, a strong possibility that we're being played here, especially when the bricks were all in every city positioned perfectly for the looters to take out the windows of big businesses. 100 million RFID vaccines ready to be delivered to the American people. Wow. I heard that they've developed these RFID vaccines. This will uh, will give you front row this center seat tough. on this. We're going to be looking at the vaccines that are coming. Yeah, nice. We may get verbal directions only. Oh, wow. <laughs> Teacher whips students with his belt to break up the fight. Hmm. I believe that that would be allowed in, in Texas, but not in other states. Texas allows corporal punishment in the classroom. 
Yeah, your, your kids can be beaten in Texas. You didn't know that? You have to sign a waiver when you put your kids through school in Texas. Yeah, great teacher, highly trained. Well, you know, that's that's nothing compared to the future. The future of the classrooms will all be set up with with 5G uh, electrocution setters that will, you know, jolt the children if they're not properly reading. They're already using this technology in, in Japan and China. They're trying to develop this technology so the kids will remain on task so that it gives them electrical shocks whenever they, they drift away. And, they're, and the, the system will be monitoring their, their minds so that we'll know if they're actually thinking. Yeah, the 5G net networks that are being set up right now in all of the different schools in America uh, by order of the government secretly will actually manipulate kids in the same kind of way, but with electric shock. I wouldn't want to send a kid to a school in this day and age. I can only imagine what that's going to be like. Now, will teachers be involved? I don't think so. I think most of the stuff will be operated outside the classroom. I doubt the teacher will even know what's going on. Yeah, the 5G electrocution uh, centers will be set up uh, remotely, so they'll be monitoring everything through video cameras, and they'll see everybody. I just made this up. What did I cook tonight? I cooked a brick chicken, Mariana. Yeah, I just, I'm making this stuff up on the fly as I go. I can't help it. I mean, we don't have any answers about the safety of the 5G network, so we only have to assume the worst, right? That's all I'm trying to do. Well, it's not that the brick was cold. It was the, the brick was, it was part of a cold fusion chicken I made. I made a cold fusion brick chicken. I used a technique where the cold brick holds in and insulates the heat of the chicken. So it's a cold fusion brick concept. Yeah. Hard to understand, isn't it? Well, it was in honor of the brick chicken concept. It did hold the chicken down, and man, it cooked really well. I had a wonderful chicken dinner tonight. I'm very happy to say. It was exciting. Yeah. I and one thing about it is the the bone the chicken just fell right off the bone. It was like cutting butter, like the National Guard when Trump said the National Guard was stopping the protests. Is like cutting butter, cutting right through butter. That's how the chicken was tonight. It was all mashed up from the brick and pressed down and marinated. and It was weak, very weak. The chicken no longer could withstand itself against my, my mouth when I ate it. It gave in. It surrendered. That's the wrong chat room. Wow, okay. Hmm. Okay, I guess that's the wrong one. No, we didn't do anything unnatural with the chicken. I, I did it in honor of the uh, chicken yucca, uh, the new virus that's coming, coming that's going to be worse than COVID. Yeah. I, I did it in honor of that and the bricks that the government placed conveniently for rioters to put through windows. We're living in a time where you either wake up or you don't. Your choice. Hmm. So you want what's going on, huh? Okay. I'll do that for you. Here we go. And a one, two, three, what's going on? Hey, uh, do you ever wonder, like, what is going on? I mean, like, do you ever, like, wake up or, do uh, like, do something and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. All the time. 
All right, so here we are at the closing hours of uh, of our show. I just did a very powerful video of all these compilations of brick bricks being uh, set up outside of various cities. The means, mainstream media has not mentioned one iota about the bricks. There is a Twitter category, Bricks for Rioters. If you want to check it out, I'll post the link. You can check it out very easily. That's my video on 153 I just posted last night. And here's the link to the, uh, the, the Twitter account when you search for all the different brick shots. So that'll get you more bricks. There's lots of stuff being posted there. Uh, hashtag bricks for rioters is the hashtag on Twitter. So that's a significant factor that the media will not cover. And that alone tells you there's a cover up right there. Looks like typical Democrats. Yeah, well, I call them Antifocrats. No, they're, they're no longer Democrats, they're Antifocrats. People protesting police abuse are pummeled by police abuse. Exactly. Yeah, well, I, I think that if you stay away from violence, and when I told you to protest, I remember I said only protest in your car. They like me. Yes, Anderson Cooper, they like me. And if you don't like it, you're out of here. Poor Anderson Cooper got muted for a while. Let them teach him a lesson. They like me more than they like you, Anderson. Yeah, that's because I'm, I'm cuter than you are. That's right. Your link. Okay, page six. Here we go. Alicia Silverstone. Poor Anderson, he doesn't have the look, you know. His face is all twisted from that Aster Vanderbilt thing. Alicia Silverstone takes baths with her nine-year-old son in quarantine. Wow. What can I say? I mean, is his nine-year-old son is her nine-year-old son a, a woman or? I got it. The clueless star shared that she had a nine-year-old son, Bo Blue, have been taking baths together to pass the time during COVID-19. My son and I take baths together, and when he's not with me, I take a bath, and that really feels nourishing and comforting. Oh, that's good. So she takes a bath normally with her with her nine year old son. I don't know what to think about that. You know, I don't. I, I really don't even have a clue as to what to say about that, other than it's odd. I can't imagine taking a bath with my mother at nine years old. That's just a little weird, frankly. Yeah, it's just, it's wrong. I mean, if it was a father taking a bath with his, uh, his son or daughter, that would be really weird, right? So now what are we going to do? Are we going to arrest her for pedophilia? She has a, a momentary uh, lapse of, of reality. It's, it's all wrong, but what do we do? I mean, do we charge her with a crime? No. I mean, if they want to, I suppose, but I don't, how do you prove the child was naked in the bath, you know? This whole thing is kind of weird. So Wall Street is uh, facing giant, uh, the Wall Street giant faces bipartisan fire in running unprecedented federal bailout. Yeah, they're just burning money left and right just to keep the economy float right now. now like I said, $30 trillion is what we're aimed at in debt in terms of national debt. We'll be there by the end of the year, I think. I never thought that was possible, but here we are. BlackRock, a Wall Street titan that manages $7 trillion in assets, is facing growing scrutiny over its role in the center of the Federal Reserve's massive bailout of U.S. corporations, and it's coming from all sides. The world's largest asset manager is sparking concern from U.S. lawmakers in both parties on multiple fronts, including over its sheer size and market power, its ties to China, and its tough stance against companies that contribute to climate change and the extent of which its own bottom line may benefit from the government programs. It's not the first time BlackRock has played a pivotal part in carrying out federal initiatives. It helped manage the toxic assets that the Fed acquired from AIG and Bear Stearns during the last crisis. But the company's influence over financial markets and its Washington presence have ballooned over the last decade. The, that culminated in, in its selection by the Fed to run an over, unprecedented program to buy hundreds of billions of dollars in debt from large companies 
slammed by the coronavirus crisis. They're huge and they have tremendous influence, Representative Choi Garcia said. They're not bound by the same regulations and rules as banks would be. You know, we have the same relationship with uh, Citicorp and we've given them a bailout of $11 trillion if they need it. <laughs> Some ridiculous number. I think it's $7 trillion. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have an $11 trillion bailout. So between the two of them, we're at $20 trillion on top of our debt if we have to bail them out. Oh, it's scary. There's no money backing the, the fractional reserve These banking really system anymore. There's no money backing the system itself. That's the problem. They don't have to put money down on uh, on on money they borrow now. That's the first time in history this has ever happened. So there you have it. Okay, we're going to exit with a little bit of can't stop. We won't stop, and uh, we will stop the show. It's inevitable. Tonight has to end. But man, it's just been nonstop, hasn't it? It's like you don't get a moment's rest from all of this. Every one of us is in the middle of this uh, ridiculous nightmare we never asked for. That's how we all feel, and I think we can all share in that feeling. We didn't ask for any of this, and our president has been a complete jerk. If you want to stop Donald Trump, like I said, email or call your senators, no matter whether you're Republican or Democrat, and ask to impeach again. Seriously. That's one way to stop the New World Order from taking over. Now, Donald Trump is not in any way going to stop the deep state. He's owned by the deep state. And if you think for a second that that's not happening, just ask yourself, has he prosecuted anyone in three years? And no, your answer isn't, wait till you see what's coming, Dave. No, no, that's not your answer. Not wait till you see what's coming, Dave. Your answer is he hasn't prosecuted anyone in three years. Come on. He won't call out George Soros as being a funder of Antifa. Donald Trump will not call out his friend Soros. He won't call out Bill Gates. And he won't promise to you that he won't force vaccinate you. Now I'm promising, and I'm the only candidate out there promising no forced vaccinations ever and no forced testing ever. Now that goes directly in opposition to the New World Order. And what they're trying to do is impinge a global authority on the U.S. and trying to force us to do things like a bunch of sheep. And we weren't sheep, we're Americans. We were born independent and free. You can't put people who are independent and free in a cage and say, oh, that's okay. So fight for your rights, stand up for everything, engage in civil disobedience, but don't hurt anyone. Don't run out of your car, stay in your car. It's a lot safer. Beep your horn, go to the market, but don't riot, don't protest, don't waste your time on that. They're only gonna use that as a, a way of accelerating more of a crisis in America. So calmer heads will prevail. I urge all of you to just remain calm. And uh, sip some tea or coffee or something and relax. Enjoy some music. Take care. Good night. We can't stop and we won't stop. We're going to dance all night, bring it on to the sunlight.